What's going on, guys? Welcome back to part two of our Guilds of Ravnica set review. I got uh, Swole Mike, otherwise known as Rob, and Thick Mike, otherwise known as Mike. And uh, we're doing, right now, we're going to be doing the green, gold, artifact, and land cards. Artifact and lands are pretty easy. The gold cards are going to be... Can they see that? That's bothering me. No. Okay. That is not visible on the screen. It's just to show, it's just to show what part of the... Uh, of the overlay is being. How long do you think till someone in chat finally realizes that Mike's not here and it's a green it's just, screen it's image? A, yeah. <laughs> and, and he was like, "Well, there's just not a lot of commander cards in here, man." And I'm like, "Yeah, you're right. That's a good point." <laughs> Affectionate Indrik is our first green card. Also, I don't know if we mentioned it on the last one. But we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-one cards out of 120, so less than twenty percent. Were, were constructed playable, quote unquote constructed playable. So, I don't know, not a super high amount, but whatever. It's it is what it is. I wish we could get closer to twenty five. I don't think twenty five percent of the cards in a set being playable in a constructed format, which is probably one of your most prominent formats. I don't think that's unreasonable. That number skewed because I think Hunter once heard we get some to thunder, the, so he's coming under the desk. Once we get the gold cards, I think our numbers are going to shoot up. I don't think so, but we'll see. I, I've lo I've taken a look and they look pretty pretty medium. We'll get there. Six mana for a 4-4. Four, four. I'm already off of it. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it fight target creature you don't control. That's not bad in limited. It's great in limited. Yeah. In constructed, Ooh. never paying six mana for that. I'll, I'll play Carnage Tyrant over this guy every single day. Would you? Yes. Speaking of Carnage Tyrant, this is close, right? Hey, no yes. one said commander. I was, I was thinking... No one said commander. ...of whether I would or not, okay? Yeah. A... Arboretum? Arboretum? I know it's... I know it's... Arboretum? Arboretum. Smooth Arboretum. I know it's obviously a, a deviation on Arbor. Arbor. Ar, Arboretum. Elemental. Eight mana. Nine mana. For a seven five with hex... Oh, Christ. Yeah, I know, right? That's what we need. Bring it back. Luke. This card's going to be a nightmare in limited. This is a limited nightmare. I don't know why they put any hexproof. Hexproof should be a mythic ability. If you have a hexproof card, it should be put at rare or mythic. I do not think it is a fun mechanic for uh, drafting or. I mean, if you stick, even if you stick two or three guys in front of this to kill it, like they can still have any plus three plus three trick, and you're probably going to get blown out still. This this card is really great limited. You know what's actually kind of crazy? If Tell we, me if we stop and think for a second, because like your first thought is it's only a five butt, but have we seen any five power creatures? Like we've seen? Huh. I don't think so. Barely actually, it's any. all like fours. We've, seen, we've yeah, they've been all fours. There's been a couple maybe, but I mean not. They're not prominent. No, we've literally probably seen like two or three. Just counter creatures. it. What's yeah, the problem? Limited. That's a good point. We can counter it, unlike uh, Carnage Tyrant. Beast Whisper. This this is a two three for four. If this guy was at four mana, I'd be all over it. Three mana, probably decent. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. This guy just doesn't survive on your turn four until your turn five. This is. I feel like this is such a bad rate for a card. Like they keep showing this on on promotional images, and it's it makes me. Well, it's wonder not for if... us, right? Like it's for Mike. It's for Mike's commander crowd, right? Is this a commander card? Oh, yeah, four mana. You definitely play this commander. Yeah. What? It doesn't four matter. Four mana. Four mana doesn't matter. No one's going to kill this guy when you have this out. When you're playing four-person commander... There's better things to kill than this. Yeah. No, not on not by turn four. Turn oh, yeah. four creatures? No. Commander's commander, slow. Commanders have to die. Like, Ooh, this is, we have a commander battle, guys. Command. This isn't a commander. Right, what I'm saying is, in the format where like most commanders cost three or four or five... Like, those are much more relevant to kill than it is this random thing that maybe draws one or two cards. Nerd Garçon, this is a dream come true. I get to unpack my new place, learn the new set, look at my stream, crush swole mic, laugh with OG oh Mike, and hopefully hear Frank sing songs oh about the cards. God. Fantastic. Oh, man. Nice. That's I don't know how that makes me feel. Well, it makes you feel some kind of way. <laughs> I, I just, I when you're playing four player commander, terrible. when your turn comes around every half hour, the board has been wiped. <laughs> this card is terrible. This is not a commander card. This will not be played in commander. Hey, buddy, listen. People play Soul, uh, Soul of the New Harvest or whatever. People that guy's, that that's got six mana. That's, he's right. Yeah, but it's a 6-6. Six, six. You're comparing that to a 2-3. Is it a 6-6 six, six or a 5-5? Five, five? It's a 6. All, all the, all the Phyrexian ones are 6-6s, six, I thought. That's not a Phyrexian one. Sold. Sold. It's not. It's not, It's for. It's from uh, Avacyn. It's an Avacyn card. Six. It is a six six harvester of souls, which is the op. The the converse of that was a five five, so that's interesting. Uh, Bounty of might. Why is this a rare? Because at uncommon, this would be 
insane. If you ever got two of these in your limited deck, you literally probably wouldn't lose a match. Yeah, that's true. Target creature gets plus three, plus three. Target creature gets plus three, plus three. Target creature gets plus three, plus three. Like, you can hit the same guy. You can give one yeah. creature plus six, plus six, and another plus three, plus three. Like, this card is bonkers and limited. This I don't... card's a blowout card. This card's a blowout card for sure. Yeah. Like, your opponent cannot win combat if you have this in your hand. We've played so many... We've it's very played, clear. We've played so many games of limited when there's board stalls, and then, like, people cast cards that you literally cast that card, and it just wins you the game. Yeah, one This thing, is that card. One thing to keep in mind about rarities is that a lot of times it's not because the card is so good. It's not like this is rare because it's so good. Uh, it's rare because if you had this at a lower rarity in limited, it would be un- it would be imbalanced. It would be unfair. Um, yeah, this could very easily just kill someone, too, if they don't block. Yeah, it's plus yeah, nine this damage. Does, uh, what I, my point was, like, on a board state in limited where you're at a board stall, this is literally worth at least 10 damage. Because you attack with everything, it's instant speed, and your 1-1 one, one that they didn't block, you give it plus 9, plus 9, and they just took 10. Like, this card's, this card's dumb. I agree with you. I think it's, I, I mean, I don't think it's constructive playable. Even, it's a no. lot of damage, it's a lot of abilities. Too expensive. But no. Six mana is not where you want to be. I mean, again, I'd rather just have a Carnage Tyrant. Sorry. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle your library. Uh, this card is just, I would say, strictly better than uh, Explosive Growth. Explosive Vegetation? Yeah, it's easily. Um, I, I use the word strictly um, very conservatively is because I don't think it... It's only basics or is that... No, yeah, it's, it's just actually, basics, yeah. yes. It's only okay, basics. So it's strictly better, yeah. yeah. Um, because it's it's also... it's it's People misuse the word, so I like to use it sparingly because like even shock like lightning strike is not strictly worse than lightning bolt because spell snare is a card that exists and it can counter one but not the other so it's like it's really hard to uh to say one card is strictly better than another um but i would say this is strictly better because you're not losing there, there's no difference in casting cost the ability is almost identical and you get to search for additional cards and if you don't have those additional cards it's literally the exact same card with a buffer like right. there's that's why with, it's an, with an added yeah I, the only thing is i the, would agree with that the uh the, the art is worse is this playable yeah, this will this could see play. There, I mean, there's generally always a ramp spell. I mean, I guess technically last format there wasn't circuitous growth, like circuits. Circuitous, is that a word? Circuitous route. Circuitous. Circuitous. Route. That's interesting. That's an interesting word. Anyway, uh, like we said uh, again, you can play the three mana in the blue enchantment that whenever you whenever a gate enters the battlefield, uh, you get to draw a card. You could just play this on turn four, four after that and draw two. Yeah, get two lands, two two cards, and it's actually pretty good yeah you've more than likely already drawn one off that card anyways by playing a turn one tap gate so hmm. it's also not it's worth noting that it does fix your mana too like yeah. you can play this get a blue white land and a black blue land or a black red land and yeah. all of a sudden you have all five colors right like it's actually pretty yep this card will probably even see play in commander i can see that it i mean like the the, the the fact that your color fixing is very very relevant i'm gonna prep some prep and eat some concentrated electric lettuce i will be back wow don't eat it unless it's a it's an edible. But my God, can Frank, drop the gate deck inedible? straight away for value. What? Can you eat it if it's inedible? A le- if it's inedible? Yeah, that's what you just said, didn't you? You said don't eat it if it's inedible. I said don't eat it unless it's inedible. Oh, okay. Because we're talking about mar. mar- I got that. Now. Okay, we're talking about jazz cigarettes. Crushing Kenobi. three mana. I thought this was already in the format. It might be leaving with. Amonkhet or uh, either either really. Aether Adesh or I do actually Calibre think it's one of the older sets that it's it's leaving. Uh, I don't think so. Actually, I think it's an Ixalan. I'm gonna say it's an Ixalan because I think I recognize the art. It is an Ixalan. Fantastic. Yep. Crushing Canopy, another card we have two of in the format. I think the card is great. Being able to kill a creature with flying or an enchantment at instant speed. Um, it, it being able to not have to choose between plummet or half of naturalize is really really strong. Especially when you maintain the instant speed and being able to kill a Lyra for this. Lyra or cast out. It's right. Exactly. It's definitely a constructed playable card. I'm not going to put it on the list though because it's already in the format. So it's not a card that Ravnica is bringing into us. standard. Right. Oh, always one of these dudes. <laughs> Devkarin. Devkarin Descent. Devkarin. Two, two for two. And it just gets plus two, plus two Dev- for five. Mana. Devkarin to skip. Like this is just worse than Thorn Lieutenant. Uh, like a hundred percent. It's a 2-2 two, two instead of a 2-3. Like, it's not even a question. No. It's not playable. District Guide, 3 mana for a 2-2. Two, two. This card's great. Uh, any sort of, like, Borderland Ranger, Sylvan Ranger kind of card is great. Civic Wayfinder. Mm-hmm. District Guide, when it enters the battlefield, it may search library for a basic land or a gate card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your... I think this card's going to be... This card's fine. No, I think Rejuvenator is just better. Rejuvenator? Really? Yeah, it puts it directly into play for the same mana cost. But you might miss the card is the problem. Five cards deep? I mean, it's it's also a two two versus a one one. 
Was that one a 2-2? Was it a Borderland Ranger? Or was it a 1-1? One, one? Borderland we... Ranger was a 2-2. Two, two. No, the one we just saw, though. Was it a Borderland? It's right there. It's oh. Card. It's on the, oh, it's on the okay. screen. Well, that, that's relevant, then. Either way, just that, that all that aside, like, putting the card in your hand is still relevant, especially sure. because you get to choose. Like, if you need an island, you get an island. If you need a blue-white land, you can go get a blue-white land. Like, mm -hmm. you can literally put, like, uh, a couple gates in your hand, and, and you're just fine. Or a couple gates in your deck just to search out. And I think that's still pretty good. Mm -hmm. So. Generous Stray. That's awesome card. Three mana for a one-two when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Really? You like this card? Not, no, the, the art. Oh, it's just a kitty cat. The, the art, but, but it's oh, and it's bringing it's you like a lizard. Isn't there a dead yeah. lizard on there and it's bringing yeah. it to you? That's cute. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. Uh, Golgari Raiders, four mana for a zero-zero with haste. All right, well, that's great. No, I'm just going to kid. Uh, enters the battlefield with plus one muscle counter for each creature in your graveyard. So it, it is a surveil format, don't forget. So you, you actually probably will have like seven, eight creatures in your graveyard by the time by you cast three. this. Yeah, by turn so, three, probably. Yeah. So, so can I can't imagine this not one, being a standard. Uh, turn one, land war elves, and then turn three, cast this for seven, seven. Hate I wish three. the art was a lizard with a dead cat. Good lord, man. That's dark. Come on. Anyway, Jester Pru, have a good afternoon, buddy. Thank you so much for hanging out. Whoop whoop, it's the sound of the police. Too much talk of the electric lettuce. Good times. <laughs> Grappling sundew. Isn't that a... Sundew. Isn't that a beverage? Isn't that it's Mike's a combination favorite? of them. Hey, man, you ever had a ice cold glass of sundew? Yeah, man, it's my favorite. Every Sunday. Hey, look, it's another 04 Defender. Is there a reason? Is there a... Didn't we have a Defender... The, the Just the goblin that's like, your guys lose Defender? Is that the only thing card that's it relevant? It said when he attacks. Yeah, so sure. far that's been it. There's got to be a card that destroys a card with get defender. Maybe. Who cares though? Like, why put so no many defenders one. just so we can disc just because no, we can destroy that? No one cares. Anyway, grappling Sundew gains indestructible until end of turn. What for five mana? Oh god, why did I waste so much time on that? This card's interesting. I agree with you. It reminds you of no. It's, I don't want to say Ishkana. It doesn't. It, it, it's just it, because just of the, the art. The art literally looks. Very it it similar. does have Ishkana art. Yeah. It actually is extremely. We saying all spiders look the same? No, I'm saying that spider. In, he looks like wow. he's in the same place. That's Arachnus, buddy. That's Arachnus. real Arachnus. Hatchery Spider for 7 mana. Reach and 5-7 and Undergrowth Surreal Format. When you cast this spell, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is number. So let's say let's say average we have 3 creatures. At, it's turn 7. We probably have 3 or 4 creatures. I'll say 3. Look at the top 3 cards where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. You may put a green permanent card with converted mana cost 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I think this should cost 6. I think so too. Seven seems seven's really a lot. Steep. I think it could be a four six for six. Five seven's real strong though. That's, a, that's those are high stats. Yeah. Um. I definitely don't think this is Genesis Hydra level. Like for Genesis no, Hydra, like you're getting a six six no. converted mana cost thing. Yeah. It's also this is a green permanent, not any color permanent. Like so, you have to hit a green permanent with like. Let's say, best case scenario, you've been surveilling a ton. You have five or six creatures in your graveyard. You, had, you look five or six cards deep and hit a green permanent with cost of five or six. Like, It's real restrictive. I don't think this card's going to see any play. Commander? Know. Anything? No. Mm, no. Not even Commander. No. What is it for? Who is it for? The Spider Fans. One four for three with Reach. Iron Shell Beetle. Two mana for a one one. When it enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on. This is just a reprint as well. This is just a... Uh, Timberland Ranger, Timberland Guide, Timberland Guide. Uh, yeah, probably. I don't. I'll look it up. Don't do it. I just want to know. All right. Timberland. Timberland Guide. You were right. Holy no, cow! Did you just guess. Yeah. That's good. You did good. I mean, I've heard the card Timberland Guide, but I didn't associate it with the ability. Crawl Foragers. Four mana, five mana for a four-four. When it enters the battlefield, you gain one life for each creature card. So yeah, sure, you'll gain three. It's a decent it's body. Just, yeah, it's I just mean, worse. Obstinate Bailoth. It's like I needed. It's like I'm drafting and I need one more. Five drop. Spiders maybe? for limited. I. Why would they make? They don't make rare cards really for limited. Not that frequently anyway. That card's not good in limited. Kind buds. Also, I love that on all the YouTube videos, you're like, "Thanks," and you put a heart. It's probably my favorite thing ever because you're literally just saying thanks for the video. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Crawl harpooner. Two mana for a three two with reach. This card seems good already. Uh, that's a good. That's a good rate. When it enters the battlefield, choose up to one target creature with flying. I will choose your Lyra. That you don't control. I'm not going to target my own guys with this. It gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Then you may have a fight. So if they have a Lyra and you have two creature cards in your graveyard, this is just a two mana removal spell for a flyer. Like if they have the Dream, I forgot the thing's name. Dream something. Dream, Dream Eater. Dream Eater. Dream. 
Um, then this just literally kills it by itself for so two it, mana. It gets pumped for every creature in your graveyard. So if you have right? three creatures, it gets plus three it, plus zero, oh. and then it becomes a five two, and then it fights the Lyra. You may have what it. You're saying it doesn't yeah. have to. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. That's a good two drop. Yeah, so it either kills their flyer or. And a three two for two is not a bad. Right, one. and it has reach. <laughs> so it's again, it has it's a three two for two with an upside, two upsides. I, this card's fantastic. We've actually seen a lot of one power flyers too, so that's extremely relevant. I'm talking about constructed though. This is obviously constructed playable, right? Like it kills their, it kills really. No. Why? If you're playing against a control deck, like you can kill their Lyra on the spot, you can kill any of their flyers on the spot. This is just green removal. And it's its power is higher I than I think the removal is a plus, but I think no, the only reason this would be sure. constructed playable is because it has the plus ability. But the fact that it's but a it, two drop that deals three damage is what makes it relevant to me. But, it, I, but it does do that. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying maybe. I'm saying maybe. I I, I don't think that this is constructed playable. No, I don't on turn two, you don't play a three power creature that has reach and a second ability that kills their flyer in the later game. It doesn't. It doesn't kill their flyer in a later game. How does it not kill their flyer? Yeah, the, it's when you cast it, isn't it? When ATV. Yes, but in a later game, if, if you, you draw this, hand, yeah, if you draw this on turn six, Mike, it's still decent. I can see it as a fringe playable. You're not contributing anything. That's that's a contribution. What are you talking about, man? I take it back. I'm sorry. Target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each creature you control. Might of the masses. Pretty good. Okay. I mean, if I gave trample, I'd be fine with it. But like, well, but I mean, if you're playing like tokens or something like that, I mean. All right, it's not good. It's a reprint. Oh, boy. I want Thorn Lieutenant over this main board. What's a main board? Why do people say main? I don't understand what a main board is. Can you explain? Main, main deck. Explain what a main board is. I don't know what that means. Okay. I don't know what that means. I want it for my side cards. Ooh, another Hexproof guy. I bet he'll be fun. No, yeah, he's a mythic. That's not the same thing. Null Hide Ferox, 6-6 six, six for 4. Hexproof, you can't cast non-creature spells. Sure. Two mana, Null Hide Ferox... Uh, lose this ability until end of turn. Uh, uh, act like this ability is from Prophecy and any player may activate this. Okay. We got a Prophecy card in our hands. If a spell or ability in opponent controls causes you to discard this, put it into play instead. This card's excellent. Is it really? Excellent. This card will immediately make like a um, green splash another color deck. My guess is Golgari. And literally the only removal spells that you run is like four Assassin's Trophy. A four mana six six with hex hexproof. You immediately sh you immediately eat one of their entire turns to remove it. Not to mention you can shut off its ability on your own to cast the assassin's trophy. The fact that it completely counters the ability on um, Nicol Bolas, like that's that's busted. This card's busted. Interesting. I'm gonna. I don't think it's busted by any means. This card's very good. Four mana six six. Oh, this card's really good. Not being able to cast creature spells and non-creature spells is a very real thing, though. I mean, it becomes a deck build, right? That's You're building a deck to fit the card. But there's so many good above-curve green cards. Can't wait until player A makes player B discard this, bro, and then it screws over player B because they were planning on casting non-creature spells but can't. I don't think that you Dang build that it. deck like that. That doesn't make sense. You don't make sense. Okay, cool. Yeah. Why well, did, did, were you anticipating being wrecked so badly, or did it just? It just came. On, yeah, it just, it just it. came on yeah, out of nowhere. Just, yeah, that's rough. Down. That's it's rough. A heavyweight. You still have sarcasm in your beard. Part. It's, it's all the mustache too. Yeah, get it. Fan it. I'm fanning it. I don't want to touch it. Do you think you can fan it away? I'm fanning it away. It's way it. too heavy. It's way heavier for the it's so, it's so thick. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until <laughs> end of turn, and convoke. Meh. I uh, I see what you're saying, Pax favor. Pause for reflection. I did it too. We did it. He didn't move. He was already paused. He was so stoic. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn with... Con it's three mana. Why do you need to convoke this? Oh, okay. How much cheaper can it be, man? Give it jumpstart or something. Small white is 1,000% like correct. Well, then, in my face. We'll see. Pelt Collector, one mana. Hey, man, have you seen this card? <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's, for, that's for Matthew Ori, wherever he may be right now. Um... Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pell Collector, put a 1 1 counter on it. So when a 2 2 dies, put a counter on it. Then when a 3 3 dies, put a counter on it, etc., etc. Um, or ETVs. It's not just dies. Yes, correct. As long as Pell Collector has three or more counters, it gets trample. Yeah, this card's pretty good. This card's busted. I don't think it's. I think you over. This card is so good. You can kill it like it dies with anything. This is your ulterior one drop to your Lanoir Elf. Like this is great. This card's excellent. Just because that it is that doesn't mean it's busted. Yes, I think it this, does because it it no, scales it with the game. 
okay. as the game goes on, it scales. This is what you want in a one drop. It's a one drop. Morgan, really thank you so much for the for the continuation of the gift sub. Really appreciate it. It's you a are really the best. Bad top deck, though. It's not only a bad top deck, but like, I don't think you understand. It takes several turns to actually get this guy going in in a format like Modern, where you have Thalia's Lieutenants, you have Champion of the Parish. Like, you have a, a high density of creatures that do similar things like this. So it's a lot more powerful in that format because you have all these creatures that are already doing this effect. So getting rid of one doesn't necessarily help you. If you play Pelt Collector, it's very, very easy to kill on turn one, two, or even three. Because you can deal two or three damage to it and it just dies to, I hate to say it, most removal spells. Mm -hmm. But that's it's not saying drop. it's that's not I understand that. I'm not saying it's not a good card in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying I think saying busted is a little a little extreme. In a standard in standard format, I think that the power level of this card is pretty busted. I, I think, think it's, it's significantly busted. stronger in older formats that have a higher density of cards that do the same thing. You have you want an oversaturation of this card so that killing any one of them uh, doesn't really hinder your strategy. If you play this and I kill it, like on the first two turns before you get any damage in, which is easy to do because it's a one one. The only way I would feel like I didn't win that trade would be if you shock it. Any other removal spell you're trading up. Well, Sure, but even if I'm trading my lightning strike for this, I still used a low tier removal spell for your busted rare. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean it makes sense. I think it's I just, good. I don't think it's fun. I like I said, I think it is good. I think it's a great card. Uh it dies to deadweight. <laughs> you know, I mean and like you have to play another guy. It's it's a bad on its own and it's also a poor top deck, just like Champion of the Parish. You know, I think it's but good. Being a poor do top deck doesn't make the card just invalid right that being, no like lanowar Elf on turn six is a poor dop deck that but lanowar elves bad. is not busted i think you're using busted too loosely but i mean like again, again it's just uh, it's, sure maybe maybe our maybe our, our yeah yeah our yeah and i accept that anyway we're gonna move on because it's clearly good <laughs> port, hey <laughs> port cullis vine one mana for a o3 defender oh my god the ability is not bad I think there are more defenders and one mana cards in this in this entire set We've so far so many. than there have been playable cards in this <laughs> entire right, set. You're right, actually. You're right. Like, it's unreal. You're right. Uh, sacrifice a creature with defender, draw a card. That's the best thing you can do with this. Get rid of it to draw a different <laughs> card. Sacrifice. That's the best. This card is probably a constructed staple you because the ability... <laughs> Is exactly what you want to be doing with it. You were able to block the 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 dude we just saw one time, and then you block sack it. That's value. Dies to drawing, and you have no cards left. Prey upon. Is this also in the format? Come on. So, no. It just was. It had to be just in the format, right? It is. It's an Ixlon. It could be. It probably is. It's actually it's an Explorers of Ixlon. No, it's an Ixlon. Ixlon. Is it in both? Wait, this is. No, this is 37 out of 47. It's an Explorers of Ixalan. But nevertheless, it's still standard legal already. And it's not being played. But, I mean, I understand I understand its applications for limited. Don't get me wrong. Just because I'm like, why is this card here? I don't understand. I get it. It's for limited. But how many reprints are in this set? It's like, it seems high. Siege Worm. There you go. That's how many reprint, reprints are it? in this set? Yes. <laughs> Siege Worm. Again, not going to see Constructed Plague. Fine for limited. It's a 5-5 Trampler. It's huge. Whatever. Yeah, you can play for both or Bronco. Sprouting Renewal. Three mana for a Sorcery. Uh, you can convoke it if you'd like. You can leave your friends behind because your friends don't convoke. And if they don't convoke, well, they're not going to reduce your mana cost. Uh, create a 2-2 green and white elf knight creature token with vigilance. Destroy an artifact or enchantment. You get one of those modes. This is a great card to draft. I think this card's super versatile. I, I I could see this seeing play in Constructed even. If you get to a point where like they don't have their cast out or they don't have... I'm going to keep saying cast out even though that's not the... You with know the what we're talking about. Yeah. The four mana enchantment. Like It's like saying Oblivion Ring. Um, if they don't have their cast out... You could still just make a two two if you need to, you know. Like I think this is it's, it's a very useful, it's a very useful card. Yep, I think it's good. I'll put it in. I, there. I think it's pretty good. I, I I can see it as playable. The sorcery is the only thing that kind of kind of. I agree with you. Brings it back. Um, it's a good boy. Like it's one more mana than naturalize, and it can't be instant speed, right? But it does convoke and it does make a two two. And being a knight is not irrelevant. No. So, I don't know. I'll put it on the list. Is I think it's Cross and Tusker. I don't know. Probably not because Cross and Tusker's an onslaught. Uh, Utopia's uh, urban. I thought that's Utopia sprawl. Urban Utopia. What are you doing right now? You're just looking closer. You're an onslaught. Got him. When Utopia, I really hope the power doesn't go out. I would cry. When Urban Utopia enters the battlefield, draw a card. Okay. Uh, and Channel Land has tap add one man. You know, this is also a card that's been printed, right? Like this has been. 
Has this been done? It's like there's Parametra's no, favor, one, but it's... It doesn't uh, give you double mana, right? It just no, it just, no, it just uh, makes no, one. It, it makes your land a bird. Nah, nah bro. A bop. That's a weird... Oh, art. actually, Rexage exists, which does the same thing. That's in standard, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I'm going to take Spreading Renewal off then, because like, it's a 2-1... You always get the two one, and you always get the destroy an artifact or enchantment. Yeah, that's a good point. Like in standard, so it's it's in standard, the cards are only good enough as your other options, right? So you're not going to play a six mana spell that destroys all creatures. You have a four mana spell that destroys all creatures. So in that case, when I hadn't considered reclamation sage, this card is decent. Now I'm not so sure. Mediocre. Uh, Vigor spine worm. Vigor spine worm. Six mana for a six four. When Vigor Spine Worm enters battlefield, target creature gains vigilance and plus X plus X, where X is the number of obviously creatures. Uh, it can't be blocked by more than one creature. That's kind of relevant. Oh, this card seems really obnoxious in limited. Um, it's not Carnage Tyrant, though, so we're going to keep on Yeah, moving. I would just be casting Carnage Tyrant. Vivid Revival. Is that how you pronounce it? Revival? That's how I would have said it. Reveal. We should just Ru Revival? We should just get it. Return up to three target five mana. Return up to three target multicolor cards from your graveyard. Exile this. Why does it have to be multicolor? It's a it's a surveil format. That's why. Oh. Doesn't make any sense. No. No, no. I think I get it. Wait, no, I don't. War a copy. Uh, three two for three with vigilance. Wild Saratog. Four three for four. Oh, that looks like the thing that was on the card. The thing that was on the yeah, the one I just said is the Cross and Tusker. It probably is. And this is the buy box promo that you cannot find in the set, unfortunately, because Wizards is weird. Uh, it is indestructible. It is a 16-16, which is the largest creature in Magic. Ever. Uh, and it is a 10-mana worm with Convoke. Is this playable? No. It doesn't have Trample. It's this indestructible, is, though. This is not playable. Yeah, why doesn't it have Trample? This is not playable. Because if you had, if you if this had Trample, it'd be real busted. If it, was, if it had Trample, if indestructible and Trample, that's yeah, busted. No, that's, that's dumb. That's hard to deal with. Yeah. This costs 10 mana, though. No, it doesn't. It's got Convoke. So it costs like seven. It costs like six or seven. If I offer seven you mana seven for mana, a 16, 16 indestructible I mean, trample, you you're playing up on that, seven. Man. You're playing six mana for Carnage Tyrant. I'll pay seven yeah, mana for 16, 16, say, man. We're not, we're not sure. casting Carnage Tyrant. We're Plus, it doesn't have like Shroud, so you can give it Flight. You can give it Trample. Like, there are ways to do that. This card could definitely just kill you on the next turn. I mean... <laughs> But yeah, again, I would probably play Galt over this. I don't see it. Like 12 12. In, in constructed, like a 12, the difference between a 12 12 and a, and a 16 16 is pretty negligible, to be honest. Yeah. Um, plus, I don't have to actually tap the creatures I'm using to pay for Galta. And they're going to reduce the cost by. Like a, a Steel Leaf Champion reduces the cost by one on this card. It reduces it by five on Galta. So. Oh, Galta's definitely better. Yeah, we're definitely. I don't think this card's playable. No. Unlike yes. Nexus of Fate, which is the previous uh, Biox promo. I, I also ordered these by Boros, Demir, Golgari, uh, Is it Celestia. I ordered an alphabetical order, so we're going to go, obviously, the Boros first. And I will put those also in foot? It's not There's my foot. Carpet. Carpet. Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice. Four mana for a 2-5. Flying with Mentor. This is a lot of text. You can tell because it's so small. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one target creature you control. All right, she can choose herself, so we'll say, for the sake of argument, her. Until the end of turn, that creature gets plus two, plus oh, so she's a four, five. Gains trample if it's red, and gains vigilance if it's white. So, she would be a four, five trampler, flying trampler, with vigilance and mentor for, for yeah, she's great. This is a great card. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem with this. Uh, yeah, this card's busted. This is what every, the power level of mythic should be. I don't think every mythic should be this power level. Your playable mythics, I guess, I mean. This, this card's like... Well, yeah, but it, I mean, like, if they're this powerful level, they, they become playable Well, this minutes. card isn't, like, this card doesn't destroy and just, you cast this and you win the game. So, I, I that that was kind of my point. Like, it's not an, I cast this Aurelia and I win the game. But it is, like, it's, I cast this and you should probably deal with it relatively quickly. yeah. Or else it's going to it's gonna attack you on different axes. I'm going to make my other creatures bigger. Uh, she's going to give buffs to these other, like, one yeah. guy, another guy, mentor, flying. The, the fact that you can fetch this with, with Militia Bugler is a really cool... Um, oh, because too tough, too power. Yes. That's actually very interesting. Yes, the fact. Ah, that the old, that. the old bugler. Yeah. Mm. Boros Challenger, two mana for a two three. That's a good rate. Excellent. Mentor. Okay, that's an ability, and it gets plus one plus one till end of turn. So kind of relevant for the late game if you want to mentor your guys. And you can stack the triggers. Is too. this card playable? No, I think there's better two drops that that um, have two power. Like, in Constructed, the second ability is not going to be relevant. You're not going to be paying four mana for this. Four four mana for a plus one, plus one on one creature. If it was all your creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn, maybe. Then we're talking. 
Uh, a reusable buff like that is very, very good. However, just one creature getting plus one, plus one for four mana. No. So you're looking at Mentor on a 2-3, which is only going to affect your 1-1s. One yeah. Yeah, I don't really see it happening. Sadly. Oh, hey, and another thing that we didn't discuss, too, uh, with the Aurelia. The Aurelia's keywords uh, allows her to flip Path of Metal, which that's extremely relevant, too. Does it? Yes, it does. Do you have to announce it as an attacker? No, it just says when you have, whenever. You uh, attack. Whenever you attack with at least two creatures that have first strike, double strike, vigilance, and or haste. Yeah. But she only attack with one. Oh, so you're saying if you give it to someone else? Yeah, her using her ability on someone else. Let's see. Oh, that's the beginning of combat. Yeah, so you're not okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think this card's that playable. I think it's a good card. Uh, I think you'd pick it unlimited very, very highly. Chance for glory, three mana, for a mythic creatures you control gain indestructible. Take an extra turn after this one at the beginning of that turn's end step. You lose the game. Uh, I like cards like this because in the decks you play them in, you usually can uh, can you, like you, you're you're positioning yourself to win. Um, so when you have nine mana, you can play in indescribable blaze or whatever it is, uh, in inescapable blaze, and then play this, and then you would just play your second inescapable blaze and kill him. I think transfer glory is good. I don't think like you got to look at a card like glorious end, yeah. and that didn't see much play. Much it's all zero. And you can play this, that card that ends the turn, and then you don't lose. Sundial the Infinite. Yeah, boom. Gideon's Emblem. And the thing is, yeah, the thing is you had Gideon's Emblem previously. Now you do not. So I think this is um, this is probably not going to see play. But this I not I like this card. I think it's, it's cool card. I think it's cool. Deafening Clarion will definitely see this some card's play. Good. Yeah, Deafening Clarion, uh, three mana sorcery. It deals three damage to each creature, or or you your guys gain life link until end of turn. Both are relevant. Uh, usually you'd pay three mana for just the first part alone, but being able to just give your guys life link. Um, wait, hold on. No, this says creature control game industry. Do, it does not go away. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't go away. There's a couple keyword cards in this set that are seem awkwardly. Written. So here's the thing. Um, there's an is it card that says switch power and toughness of two creatures. All right. It's meant to say until end of turn. This does not say that. Mm -mm. That's interesting. They already errata that card. They already right. They so it's surprising they didn't errata this. Yeah. Like I was actually talking about this with Patrick Sullivan on on Facebook, and and one of the things is like he mentioned that tracking it is super weird, right? Like because you have you're switching the power and toughness of two creatures, and it's until end of turn normally. That's that's normally an until end of turn effect, and if it's not, it's really difficult to track for the remainder of the game. But also tracking... I guess you don't have to track this because it's not the only the creatures you have in play. I guess that makes sense because it's just creatures you control getting indestructible. Now that you say it like that, that is kind of weird because... Well, I mean, that's obviously you upon resolution. You just have to keep track of it for which, the rest of the game. Whichever creatures are, are on the battlefield at that time. And they're also presuming that like it's meant to... In the game. Right. But, but I mean, like, lose or you it win. might not happen. Like yeah. You could also disallow the trigger. Yeah. You know? The take an extra turn at the end of the beginning of the next... Like, the you could... You could disallow the, the the delayed trigger and be fine i definitely think that we're not saying that they made an error and they put the wrong wording on there i'm saying it's interesting that they wanted one by design and one not when they're both tracking issues when they're both forcing you to keep well, track the bigger, of something i think the bigger that's, issue that's not the bigger issue of the uh the one that you're referring to the one that flips the power and toughness yeah. is that also alters the way you apply plus and negative Correct. effects because they switch Right. So, like, Titan Strength is, you know, plus three, plus three is easy, right? They just buff both. Plus three, plus one would actually be plus it one, plus flipped. three. It's, yes. Yeah. So, that's why I think they errated that one, because they realized at that point it was too much. Garrison Sergeant. Garrison. Five mana. This is the last card. Yeah, we definitely did. Okay. So, yeah. five mana for a three, three. It doubles, Garrison gets, uh, so he gets double strike as long as you control a gate. Garrison's, like, his name. It should be Sergeant Garrison. That'd be funny. Oh, yeah. Sergeant Mr. Garrison. Okay. Actually, is that Mr. Mackey? That was Mackey that you just mm. did. Mm. Yeah. Hammer, Hammer dropper. dropper. <laughs> four mana for a 5-2 with Mentor. That's such a cool name. I mean, this is just the same as the 4-2 for 5 with Haste and Mentor, yeah, this right? This is just crap. Like, you're just attacking. You're attacking with both of them on turn 5. One is a 5-2, one is a 4-2. It's basically the same card. Injustice, or Justice Strike, uh, two mana. Card's excellent. Target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. This is just basically removal for, you know, nine times out Boros of ten. Agra. This card's great. It doesn't kill your Tarmogoyf, but I guess that's fine. Yep, your standard Goyf. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I don't think it's busted, but I think it's good. 
Legion Guild Mage. I don't think these Guild Mages are really doing it for me. There's one of them. I think the Demir, the, the Demir one. There's the Demir. One of them. Demir. There's one of them. It's like when you demo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Don't forget to demo, guys. Don't announce what card you demo for when you demo. No. I've Legion fallen. Guild Mage. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Obviously, guild, like, like Guild Mages do. And we have five, six mana in a tap. It deals three damage to each opponent. Uh, which is very similar to the uh, Initiate, the the Blood Rite Initiate, the one that deals... You tap eight. Flame, flame Rite Invoker? Invoker, The yeah. Invoker, yeah, yeah, yeah. Deals Where you tap eight to deal five. Four or five, yeah. Uh, five, five. And then three mana, tap another creature. That's fine, but three mana is a big investment, and tapping this is also a big investment, so... I don't know. There's generally a card like that in, in almost every limited mm -hmm. format. A tapper? Yep. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm just saying, like, no. Mm -mm. Uh, Skynet Legionnaire, three mana for a 2-2, two -two, flying with haste. I actually think this card's fine. Not in, not, in, not in constructed. Really? No way. It's way too way too low power. Offer Mike a bed for a nap. Hmm. Um, Mike's not here. Mike's not here. That's no, a green screen. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this card has seen play before in aggressive formats. Attack for two on turn two. Attack for four on turn four. Uh, I said turn two, turn three, and then four on turn four with the second one. I, I think this is better than Phoenix, honestly. Like, I, I think you're. Uh, you're spending less mana if they plan on killing it, and I don't have to worry about it coming back. I don't know. It's also a knight, so I could go turn three history banalia, turn four this guy, and then turn five get the uh, attacking with two of them, you know, or, or plus two plus one rather. I don't know. It's decent. I, I think this card's fine. I think if there is a Boros Agro deck, there's a possibility that it sees play, but I'm not going to guarantee. I can't guarantee that. Evasion is relevant. Swath Cutter. And Haste is also good, too. Yeah, obviously. Um, I mean, because with the Haste, it's very similar to a 2-2 Flyer for two. Swath Cutter Giant. Six mana for a 5-5 five, five with Vigilance. Whenever it attacks, it deals one damage to each creature defending player control. It's just a good limited card. It's a fine guy. Yeah. Swiftblade Vindicator. 1-1 one, one for two. Yes. Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample. Card's great. Is it? In a, men in a mentor format, double strike. In a men it's a mentor format now. In a mentor format. Wow, the mentor surveil format is getting <laughs> it's getting more diverse by the day, guys. This card's good. As a two drop, this is card's it? Great. And someone actually just made a good point. In in constructed, that three drop competes with Legion War Boss and the new uh Taoji. Oh whatever. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, 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 right on. Yeah. No, this this card seems very good. I'm gonna put it in the. I'm gonna put it in the list. I'm not sold on it. This should be in the list. I think when you see a dearth of uh, of one one creatures like this, you just start bringing in cards that deal one damage, which there probably are a good amount of. And I think it's just like all of your guys just become worse once people know how to kill them very very efficiently. But I mean that's just. I mean I don't know. I, I don't think it's bad. Mm. I just think it becomes susceptible to more forms of removal than it ordinarily would be if it was just a larger body. You tag this guy and then you. Then you... Rabble Hulk, or whatever that card's called. Rabble Hulk? Rubble Hulk? Rubble Pelt Maka? The... It's, the, it's the one where you discard it and your creature gets plus X, plus X equal to land you control. So three? I don't know what's happening. Are you talking about like late in the game? Yeah. Are, you, mm -hmm. are you drunk right now? Maybe. I think he is drunk. Are you drunk right now? I've been smelling it. Chain Whirler. Oh my god, yeah, dude. All these cards are terrible with Chain Whirler. This guy, Pelt Collector, they're all dead. Uh, yeah. Not if he, Not if you cast your own Chain Whirler. It's still... Why? Because it doesn't do damage to him. But... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, he's not a green screen. Alrighty then. Tajik, Legion's Edge. Three mana for a 3-2. Haste, Mentor. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. And he gains first strike until the end. This card's great. It's a good card. 3-2 um, haste for three. My problem with this is that it is legendary, so how many do you want to play? Three. I probably want to say two. It's going to get... This eats the first removal spell. Oh, Dearth means shortage. I think it means surplus. Okay, so... Sh sh what did I say? A surplus? I said a Dearth of one ones? I didn't judge you because I said Dearth... You said Dearth and I was like, I don't know what you just said. Oh, yeah. So you couldn't judge me because... Correct. Uh, you were ignorant on the matter. I was... Thank you. Not to say you are ignorant. I'm just, saying on that specific matter. Yeah. Okay. Tajik, Legion's Edge. Oh, I think you did. I did. I don't want to touch the sarcasm. So this card's again, this card's fine. I don't want to draw multiples, though. And um, This is a card that gets killed when it comes out. I know. Like, all these creatures are so small, like 3-2. But, I mean, I guess it's fine. You're playing an aggro deck. Aggro, yeah. I am not an aggro player, you can tell, because I'm like, all your creatures die to the removal. 
Um, <laughs> you're but, that. You're that guy. But yeah, you just dead weight this guy, right? I don't give. Doom I don't blade. Care about this thing. I can't cast it down, which is which is something, right? Hey, That's... interesting. You just brought up. It says prevent non combat damage, so it doesn't stop dead weight on your other creatures too. It doesn't. Right. I can kill your other creatures too. I could care less. Right. If you have lightning strike in your hand, you can't. You have to kill the Tajik. But you probably want to do that anyway, right? I'm just saying. And also, that doesn't stop any of the other removals. It doesn't stop cast down on other guys. It doesn't stop dead, or, uh, doom blades on other There's guys. There's a dearth of reasons as to why you would not lightning strike versus the dead weight. These creatures all suck because they all die to Ugin. I agree with that. They don't also, die to Ugin. They get exiled by Also, we're talking about how 3-2 is a, is a, for 3 is a good rate. We just passed a 3-2 for 2 with reach. And you were like, I don't know. This is going to be why good. This guy just cost 2 mana. Push him a little. It's funny because Wo Woyek Halberdiers was a card in Return to Ravnica, I believe, as a Boros card. And that was a 3 2 for 2. And it got first strike if you had Battalion. So. Really? I thought the card you're talking about is it's a 1 2 that when it attacks, it gets plus 2 for 0. Wojek was the card we just showed. We went over Wo Wojek Halberdier. Nope, that is not in this set. Wojek Halberdier is two mana for a 3-2. Whenever it, it, it at least two other creatures attack, it gets first strike until end of turn. Yeah, that seeing that card, that card, that's a that's that's a legendary creature. It should be cost two. I mean, it doesn't have haste, but like you can just uh, take the well, haste off and make it relevant. a two mana card, right? I actually think that's better if they did that. If they took the haste off and just took made it two mana? Took the haste and made it two, yeah. Because, I mean, the yeah, I don't know. It's still good. I'm not going to say it's it's bad. Two mana would not be played in so many decks. You can't play a it's one so, red, one it's white. Right. It's right. Yeah, it would be red, white. You're so in. like You're not changing any decks that it's going in. Yeah, like, I mean, y there aren't going to be that many different decks that have a red and a white on turn two. Either way, card's fine. Um, I th Will be played. True Fire Captain, four mana, red, red, white, white. This is a cycle as well. Four, three with Mentor. Whenever True Fire Captain is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player. So it's kind of like a... Uh, was it Swift Re Mare? Reckoner? Yeah, Boros Reckoner and... Uh, what was the Mare called? Spite Mare? Uh, so it's kind of like that. You're never going to play it. Four mana... Eh, no. Not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Just not making it. Star of Extinction. That's gas. How much does Star of Extinction deal? Is it 20 or 13? 13. I forgot about that card existing. No, it deals oh, it 20. 20. <laughs> That's a two card combo, dude. <laughs> True Fire Captain into Star of Extinction? What are we thinking of? What does 13? Shivan Meteor? No, there is one. I can't think of what it is, though. Shivan Blasphemous Act. Oh, that's 13. Wow. What if you just play True Fire Captain, dive downs to give it hexproof, and then you f then you just play Star of Extinction the next turn? Dive down cycled. No, dive down stayed. No, dive, dive down is Ixalan. That makes me excited. I don't think it's realistic, but the fact that there is a two card combo that deals 20 damage in standard. Is pretty sick, dude. It's basically just a hilly cat combo. They really, they would just have to either counter star or they would have to uh, kill this in response. I mean, it's it's a cool combo though. I'm excited about it. Fresh face recruit. That's a Mike B. <laughs> two one for two. As long as it's your turn. Fresh, Fresh face, face recruit, recruit has first strike. <laughs> this is another that's so. That's so. I don't even know what word I'm using. I don't know how that. they could print this set. <laughs> and not have banned Chain Whirler. There are so many X1s in this format, it is unbelievable. It's be Fresh. Master. His name's Fresh Face. <laughs> well, you know what Fresh Face is. Well, he's like young, youthful, yeah. like right. Yeah, but it's still f saying that a magic card. And it's a little, you know. Well, because you said Fresh Face, which sounds like just a jail nickname. Like, what up, Fresh Face? <laughs> <laughs> That just sounds like a prison nickname, That's not right? That's I was going with. Oh, look. It's got... Look, look a little fresh face over there. He looks like a goober. That's the perfect way to describe that card. It looks like a goober. And this looks like the guy that's like... This looks like... This looks like Podrick in Game of Thrones. Podrick? Um, uh, of course I've seen Game of Thrones. But yes. I don't know that name. Uh, Gwendolyn Christie. What's her name? Um, I can't think of her freaking name in the show. What color hair? The... Uh, the, 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 she killed... She beats the hound. The hound... Uh, I can't think of her name. She's the huge woman. The biggest woman on the oh, show. Oh, yes. I know who you're talking about. Her squire. No, nah, I know who you're talking about. The kid. That's yes. what it looks like. That, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, she's the bodyguard. Paldrick. He was... Yeah, he worked for Brienne. Brienne yeah, Tarth. Brienne, that's he, it. Yeah, he worked for uh, Tyrion, Tyrion before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's just Paldrick. <laughs> I couldn't think of Brienne Tarth. I'm like, quickly, because I like thought of her real name before I thought of her, her character's name. That's how... Everybody turn Ph your head. Phasma. That, go back to that card real quick. Uh, he looks like his quote should be, "Hey guys, uh, are you sure?" That's what he should be are, saying. Are we doing this? Do you uh, do you think that's the best idea? 
Arya is definitely the most badass. Yes, that is not even... It's not even a question. All right, integrity. One mana target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. All right, it's fine. I, I mean, it's fine. It's an instant. It's a trick. That's not... Uh, yeah. Intervention deals three damage to any target. In, wow, this card seems great. This card's really good. It's literally War Leader's Helix on one side, which was played. And the other half is just a trick. No, card's good. Wow. Yeah, I like this card a lot. Card's good in Boros Aggro. Card's great. What is the what is the uh, what is the theme for these these split cards like integrity and intervention? I don't know. Those have no nothing in common except for alliteration. Are they just alliteration? Hmm. Hmm. Remember the time I couldn't think of uh think of her name? That's lightning like... Helix. That's right. It's Lightning Helix, not War Leader's Helix. No, Lightning Helix is three and three. War, War Leader's Helix four four. is four and four. Yeah. I like how you guys corrected me. Oh, wait, this isn't 4 and 4? Oh, it's 3 and 3. Oh, okay. That does make it a little worse. I thought it was 4 and 4. Yeah, but the, but you still get the front half of the card. Like, that's relevant. I think it's still fine. It's still versatile enough. Yeah, I think it's like, the versatility is what you're getting. It's a 1 of or a 2 of. Yeah, right. You're not playing a 4 of this. Unless you're playing it in your, uh, your blue-red uh, Inescapable Blaze deck, in which case... All right, so two mana, uh, Boros Boros, response deals five damage to target attacking or blocking creature. That's a fine removal spell. Better Sandblast. It kills most creatures for two mana. Uh, creatures you control... I think you're... No, you're tilting the right way. You're right. Yeah, it was. You did good. Creatures you can... Now you're tilting the wrong way. Creatures you control gain first strike and vigilance until end of turn after this... Oh, this is another combat face card. You don't think it's playable? No. So it's combat, though. It's pretty good. Even if you even if you just use the removal side, is that not playable? No. I think it is. Is Gideon's Reproach playable? We've had that. Gideon's no, but by itself, this deals five damage instead of four, which is relevant, and it also comes attached to a second combat step in a, an aggressive deck, in a red white aggressive deck. Two combat steps in a row. Mm. They tap out. You just kill them. Mm. I don't think it's good. No, I think this card's good. There's too many. There's there's not enough spots in the deck for spells. I think. What do you what do you, what do you what did you count up all the spots already? Well, lightning strikes an obvious inclusion. Is it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we got four slots. He's right. There's no more room. He named lightning strike. Therefore, we have no more space. You have the two mana deals damage to itself. Two mana deals damage. The to itself? creature deals damage to itself. The two mana creature deals damage. The to instant. Its yeah. The one that uh, the boros color. I would I would play this over that. No way. Why? They do the same thing. Because, no, it doesn't. That, that it lets them stop block. damage. Sure. Yeah. But That's in the relevant. later game, like, the, the amount of damage you can get through, I think this is fine. Also, yeah, you get an extra main phase as well. So you get a main, you get a main phase, then you get a combat phase, then you get a main phase. Why is you, that relevant? Because you can play this in your main phase, your second main phase, go to combat again, and then do more in your third main phase if you want. Okay. I don't know. I'm just saying, the card seems fine, man. Why are you like... It's 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 a, it's relevant in a mentor format. Is okay. The, the plus two plus two. In the I, last can, I get confused with the format sometimes. It's a, it's a mentor surveil format. As long as you got that down, you're good to go. Uh-huh. Awful take. Oh, now we're in the Demir. Ooh, exciting. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I told you. Seven re- reasonably playable cards in the Boros section. I, I like that. Balance. Okay. Four mana. I I I'm not having high hopes now. Tap a creature. Choose one or both. Tap a creature or target creature gets neg two, neg four. In, I like in blue black. You're not using this card. That's the problem. I don't think like if this was red white, that seems busted. In limited, this is I'll play this every day, hundred times a day. I agree with that because you're dealing. It's one card that deals with two. That's what that's the rate you want in limited. Oh Why well, go to the end step when you can go to another main phase? That's all I'm saying. Okay, he's right. That's correct. I mm-hmm. uh, yeah. This like so. Let's take out the tap target creature because I think that's not going to be a super relevant ability. Would you pay four mana for negative two, negative four? No. My dismembers why cost this, one mana. Why is neg four, neg four? I understand why it couldn't be neg four, neg four. No, I, like I'm saying, I think this is a Boros card. Like, this card is busted in a Boros deck, in, in an aggro deck. But No, not I wouldn't pay four mana for this effect. I'll just make two more guys. No, so my thought is, so you're in limited, right? You're attacking, you're attacking, mm. you're attacking, and then you immediately... Oh, we're talking limited. Damage. Yeah, that's what I said earlier. Yeah, that's fine. No, well, this it's... is not a constructed playable card. Okay. Yeah, in limited, it's awesome. No no question. That's why, yeah, I thought this would be a common, actually. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a great limited card. Dark Blade Agent, three mana for a 2-3. <gasps> as long as you've surveilled this turn. It's a surveil it's format. Finkel. 
Dark Blade Agent has Death Touch, and whenever this creature does come out damage to a player, you draw a card. It's Finkel. How reliably are you going to be able to surveil, though? And then, like, then they just don't... This is a surveil format. Extremely reliable. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I forgot about that, guys. Is this good enough? I don't think so. No. I don't want to play 2-3 for three. With instant speed surveil? Who cares about that? The blowouts, man. The blowouts. You think drawing one card is a blowout? No. <laughs> like, I don't think this is I think you're... This is 100% constructive play. Demir Spybug. Card's great. Blue, black, furry, 1-1, one, one, flying, menace. menace. Whenever you surveil, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Yeah, that's actually pretty this good. This card is construct. This is one of the cre- This is one of the creatures you can combo with to kill someone in a one-shot. In a one-shot? Yeah, with the with the the five, five, the 6-6 six, six flyer for 5 that you pay 2 life and surveil 2. Oh. Yes. Yeah, but, you, but surveilling 2 is still... One counter. Right, it's one counter. Yeah, right. so you surveil 2, you surveil 2, and then you hit that card that deals them 3 damage, you gain 3 life, you surveil again... You keep going. You it's it's a it's a process that can be repeated. It's a process, guys. You gotta understand the process. Disinformation campaign. Three mana. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and each opponent discards a card. You doing okay? Yeah, this card seems. I actually like this card a lot. I don't. Because it's a surveil format, though. I, I can see why you like this a lot. Um, whenever you surveil, return it to your hand. So, th- three mana. Draw discard. I draw, you discard. That's sure. not a bad rate. That's not immediately playable in the deck. I guess you surveil it goes back to your hand and there's yes. extra value. Yeah. And it's not like you're just causing them to discard cards. You're drawing as yeah, well. Yeah, I know. You're like, right. That... It's a constructible, though. Like, are you going to put this in your deck as a card? Like, every card takes up real estate in your deck, right? It, right? You could like this card. I think this card doesn't have a bad ability. I think it's good. I don't think this is an easy card that you can say, oh, I can build a, card, build a deck around. But I, I think that if you take the surveil type decks and move away from the like you're using the surveil scry you're using or um surveil scry the, sur- the counter <laughs> spell surveil what you mean. counter spell surveil you're using uh like bounce bounce effects and, and surveil like like i feel I, like in constructed like especially over the last few years that playing this on three mana like doing this as your turn three is just kind of slow i don't i don't think it's a turn three card definitely not but you want to get you want to maximize the value you get out of it. Like at a certain point past turn three, like turn six, turn seven, like your opponent's not gonna have that many cards left in their hand to be discarding. So, like th- that this card also has diminishing returns in the sense that like at, at a certain point you're just paying three mana to draw a card and they're not gonna discard anymore. Sure. And I, I agree with Reign of Notions. I think Reign of Notions is great. Um, I don't know what that is. We'll get there. I'm not gonna. I think this card's. I, I like it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There's just better. I I would like to see like this is a cool build around. I think. But yeah, I think there are better alternatives. Rain of Notions is the re- read the bones, isn't it? Yes. Okay. With yeah, much better. Instead of, yeah. Much better. Uh, what do you think of a Trad of the Silencer? Four mana for a 3-5 with flying. Oh, no, it can't be blocked. So basically the same thing. Um, whenever a Trad deals combat damage to a player, exile a creature that player controls. So you can exile uh, its target, so you can't target their, their Nullhide Ferox unless you pay two. Uh, and put a put a hit counter on it. So it's kind of like a silver counter for Karn, where it's like it's a it's an exiled card, but it has a counter on it. Kind of interesting. Um, that player loses the game if they own three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them, and then a Trata's owner shuffles it into their library. So you only get like one hit with this. And um, so basically, if you attack them with three with it three times, they lose the game. Yeah, and then it's funny because this is legendary, but it's kind of a card you want to make sure you have four of in your deck. So this is weird. It's a weird card. I don't think it's playable. I think this card's good. I think it's good, but I mean, well, at the end of the day, five power is a, five toughness is a lot, and three power is good for four mana. Plus, like, if you just attack with it once, you've already killed a creature. It's a removal spell. And it's a removal spell where, unlike Vraska's Contempt, if you get hit with it three times, you just lose. Yeah. Ice Mike looks sleepy. I don't... I, I think if it had, like, if if you paid four mana and you were able to use its ability the turn it came out, it would be good. I don't think it's playable. I think this card's playable. That does seem like a fun commander card, actually. Oh, how do you feel about the commander applications? Do you feel like this is a fun commander card? When you shovel this in, you're playing you're playing a ninety nine card deck. That's true. You only get a one of. Oh wait, but in commander you can replace the shuffle effect, right? So you can put it back in the command zone. Oh my god, can't you just play this as your commander? Yes, you can. Oh that's yeah, interesting. Anytime it changes zones, oh, yeah, yep, you can you can replace it. Oh wow. That actually makes this card a lot more dangerous. You cast this put lightning rays on it? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Hmm. Attack three times you win the That's game. interesting. Not bad. Or you kill one opponent. Okay. 
House Guild Mage. Here's the, the Demir Guild Mage. Blue Black, obviously 2-2. Two, two. For two mana and a tap, target creature doesn't untap during its controllers. Okay, so I don't like this because it doesn't tap the creature. No. It has to be tapped originally, so it does nothing for like Vigilance guys. And three mana to surveil two. That's actually pretty that's, good. Yeah, that's why that's why I think I like this one. But I'm still not two. gonna play it. Like in limited, I'm saying. Yeah, oh yeah, in limited. Yeah. I think in limited you play all the guild, guild mages yeah, always. Yeah, like yeah. you're never gonna not play guild mage if it's on color. No. So But definitely not playable in standard. Anyway. Lazav the Multifarious. This card's cool. One three for a blue black. Uh when it enters the battlefield, surveil one. That's not a lot. Uh X mana, Lazav the Multifari Multifarious. That's nice. Becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with converted mana cost X, except its name is Lazal the Multifarious. It's legendary in addition to its other types, and it has this ability. So, I mean, obviously people have been talking about this and um, Phyrexian Dreadmaw. Like, that's their biggest Dreadmaw? What is it? Phyrexian... Jur no, Phyrexian Dreadnought. Phyrexian Dreadnought. The 12-12 for yeah, one? Yeah, the 12-12 for one. That's, like, the biggest... But, I mean, like, obviously that's, a, like, a legacy or a vintage application and not... But, like, getting Phyrexian Dreadnoughts into your graveyard and uh, then also having this guy in play. This will see this will see play in standard, I think. Really? Yep. What are you copying in, like, a blue-black deck? The and it's also in your graveyard, not the, in any graveyard. The 5-5, five five, or the 6-6 six, six flyer that surveils two. Interesting. What, like, why wouldn't you just... How many 6-6 how many six, six flyers are you playing in your deck? Well, because if in your early turns when you're, you know, it's, it's a surveil format. So when you're playing your surveil deck Love it. and you, and you're, you're actively milling a five or six drop trying to hit your land drops, this allows you to cast that card now. But then you still have, I mean, it still costs you five. You, right. You're still casting it, but instead of it, it's adding a card to your hand. Sure. But you're also playing a one, three for two. I mean, yeah, but like, yeah, I mean like you're shrugging. Like, not in limited, that's fine. In constructed, that's kind of unimpressive. It's also legendary, so if you have multiple stuck in your hand, like you surveil them away. Th that's not how your hand works. You just don't draw them. It's good. That's better. I don't know. I'm not. A big, I'm not big on 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 Lazav. I don't. I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if there's a deck for it. Right. Mm. You know what card from the last sets that I really want to try and play because of all, everything that's spoiled is Rona. Rona. The three mana two two that you exile a historic permanent and you can cast it r-o-n-a yeah r-o-n-a oh yeah the one from uh from Demir from uh yeah, dominaria yeah, yeah yeah so again my problem with this is like someone said all the all the one one guys from uh the x1 guys from boros the problem is all those x1 guys become x2 guys with mentor yeah. and this just doesn't trade with them yep so then the next turn they just get bigger and they get bigger and they get bigger and it's just it's rough this is definitely a commander card you could get a Trotta in the graveyard yeah, for this. For sure. But then once you... Does it have to exile it? No, no it just becomes, it just a, copy becomes a copy. Right, That's... but then once you attack with... Yeah. Oh, then your Lazav goes away. Yeah, then you just shuffle your Lazav in. So you only still, you still only get one hit. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the next card. Keep it going. Mnemonic Betrayal. Three mana. Exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. You may cast those cards this turn. Exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. So all graveyards go away. Ooh, this is cool. I never even saw this card. You may cast those cards this turn, and you may spin a mana as though a mana of any color, any type. So it's like a Yogmas well. To cast those spells. Yeah, but only for at, this, at the beginning of the That's next sick. end step, <laughs> if any of those cards yeah. remain exiled, return them to their... Oh, they get in the graveyard, then the cards go back. That's interesting. It's kind of a cool card. I, I think it's too, it's too mana intensive. It costs three to and then you have with. to Right. Like, standard doesn't have cards that go good with Yogmas well nowadays. Yeah. This, I mean, so. it's not that great. I mean, it's not a great of a card, but it's a cool effect. Definitely seems like a mythic effect. Night Vale Predator. Blue, blue, black. Yeah, oh, definitely. You just have so many options. Yeah. Three, three for four with Hexproof, Death Touch. How many Hex... There's three Hexproof creatures in this set? My god. Two are uncommon. Flying Death Touch? Yeah, and it's Flying Death, Death Touch. Touch and Hexproof. Yeah, this card's a nightmare and limited. Yeah, this card's, Especially if you can this pump this in any way. Yes. I mean, yeah, but it's also miserable for your opponent, so... Anyway, this card's great. Not gonna see Constructed play, but... No, not for four. Cards. Yeah, no one, no one needs to know that this card is... is we don't need to tell you about this card. Notion Rain. Notion Rain. Oh, Some stay dry and others feel the pain. That's Notion interesting. Rain. The Lazav copies the creature, but it keeps its name. So it wouldn't shuffle. Uh, I don't know if that's true, though. Hold on. Because usually a Trotta is... Um, a, Trotta, a Trotta's owner shuffles a Trotta into their library. Um, I don't think that would shuffle. If it does keep its name. Maybe that's true. It wouldn't if it keeps that's its name. That's interesting. 
That it seems like it's it's referring to itself though, right? I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. When cards refer to their own name, it's basically saying this card. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't know. But like the name is it's it's that's interesting. It means itself. Yeah. Usually when a card refers to itself, it usually it you can replace it. It's synonymous with this card. Mm. Right. <clears throat> so I don't know. It's I mean, I could see it not working because it's not like it's completely immediately busted. We need to now fix everything. Notion Rain, Surveil 2, then draw two cards. Notion Rain deals two damage to you. It's basically just read the bones, this right? This is easy. This card's great. Except you're surveilling instead of scrying. This card's yeah, great. This card's good. But, yeah, I think it's great. It doesn't even need to be explained. It's yeah, Everybody knows it's good. Thief of Sanity for three mana, flying 2-2. Two, two. Whenever Thief of Sanity deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of that player's library. Excel one of them face down. Then put the rest in their graveyard. This is just a better Gonti. Uh, for as long as that card remains exiled, you may look at it, you may cast it, and you may spend mana as though it were... This is not only Gonti, but you can do it every single turn. Yeah, I don't want to say... Now that I said that and I heard myself, I don't think I would say it's better Gonti, because Gonti, when it ETBs, it automatically gets its effect. This you have right. to hit with, but there's a high ceiling on this card. It's this a, card seems It's great. a Gonti equivalent. Yeah, this card seems great. I really like this card. Yeah, I like this card as well, actually. Thief of Sanity. This is not a. This is not. This card doesn't seem like a card that fits into the Demir style that we've been seeing with Surveil. But it permits. It, yeah, it's it's actually uh, counterproductive in the Surveil format though because you're helping your opponent surveil. surveil. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. Thought Erasure, blue black. Uh, target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose an online permanent. That player discards that card and then Surveil one. This is just blue black Castigate. Instead of exiling it, you're surveilling one. It hits any permanent, not just creatures, not just uh, spells. 100% Card's good. Also, mods, thanks for getting rid of that guy who uh, literally had nothing better to do with his time than come into random streams and uh, talk about people's physical appearances, which is extremely strange for uh, adults to do. Well, but probably wasn't an adult, so. Oh, that's probably fair. They probably have to go back on Xbox Live oh, now nice. to say the N-word a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Thought Erasure. Yeah, this card's playable. Put it on the list. Um, it's better because you, like, you'll never main deck a duress, but this card is always good. Like At no point are you like... Yeah, this card. Uh, did someone ask? Uh, double. But then why would? Oh, hold on. Oh, it's the prevent legendary rules, right? So if you if you have an Atrada in play, you can still have a Lazav in play. Mm. All right. Unmoored ego. This is a, this, this card's sweet. This art's great. This card's sweet. Uh, three mana. Uh, choose a card name. I'll say Swole Mike. Search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for up to four cards with the name Swole Mike and exile them. So pretty much everywhere. That player shuffles their library, then draws... So this is just basically a three-mana cranial extraction, but it's got the Lost Legacy stipulation where if it's in their hand, they get to draw a card to replace the cards. So that's what you're paying for the difference, right? It costs one less, but for the discount, your opponent may get to draw some cards. Hmm. Blah, 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 Tron hate. Worth noting what Lars Brandon said. Yeah, you can hit lands with this, which is a brand new feature of this card. Uh, in the past, you could not have hit lands with, the, with their... Could you have? With, like, Cranial Extraction? You can uh, with Surgical. You can with Surgical, but... Surgical's not the same card, no, though. No, surgical... surgical exiles from the graveyard. I don't know. I don't know what Cranial Extraction does. Name a non-land card. Okay. Yeah, no. Cranial Extraction is the same thing. Name a non-land card. Search target player's graveyard hand and library for all the cards. It's like Morrisside. Do you know Morrisside? Yes, it's a four-mana card. It's it's functional reprint. Yeah. Is Memoricide? Name an on-land card again. Lost Legacy was... Um, not oh, Artifact. Dispossessed, though. What was Dispossessed? That's that was... an Artifact card. Okay. No, so yeah, this is the first of its kind. That's non-Artifact. Non-land. Non so yeah, yeah, like this is the first time you can actually hit lands. Um, and obviously, like, your... Uh, looks, it, it literally has to specify up to four of them, right? <clears throat> because you could actually name... Like, I'll name Mountain, mm -hmm. right? And you can get four mountains. So if they have like 20 mountains in their deck, you're not going to take all their mountains. But uh, it is an option. Like if you know they're playing... Like it's funny, you could name Valakut with this, which is really strong. Yeah, it's actually a really flexible card. We're just naming like lands specifically, which make it great. But the fact that it, it can hit anything is extremely it's, relevant. It's extremely relevant. Yeah, it's, it's um, because like you always have like... Like sometimes you'd have to choose whether you want Lost Legacy or Dispossessed. Because yep. sometimes you want to hit their Torrential Gear Hulk. Sometimes you want to hit their Aetherworks Marvel. Sometimes you just want to hit their Scarab God. So usually you'd have to pick and choose what you want to do. This hits any card. Uh, which is very similar to Assassin's Trophy in the sense that like... They're like, ah, eh, let's not restrict them anymore. Let's just make them choose anything. But it's at a good rate. 
It's not busted. It's not extremely overpowered or anything. It's just good. Uh, the real shame that is how you use to target yourself. Yeah, that's true, but I can understand that. In the late game, if you have like three forests in your hand, you could choose yourself, name forests, take three forests out of your hand and one out of your deck and draw three cards. Like, that's pretty good. Back when we had the 3-2, uh, the or it's a 3-3 three, three Eldrazi that can be cast from Exile. Um, it's a 3-3 three, three for three. That yeah. Whenever it became a target, you would uh, exile it. Yep. Um, I saw... What's it? Combo Boy. Well, I saw a... Um, a Lost Legacy deck that ran four, four Lost Legacies main. It was a, a, a Japanese tournament. And uh, basically the purpose of the deck was you would literally Lost Legacy yourself, name that card, exile all four, and then you have access to them and you draw cards if you had them in your hand. Yeah, that's pretty good. Eternal yeah. Scourge, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you like that I named Forest. Uh, so, the, so the blue-black card would, would be hitting the Forest in your hand. So I just naturally, my natural inclination was to go towards the Sultai deck for that. That's a that's a thing that you have. It's a problem that you have. I know. I don't know what I'm talking about one th three mana free three two flash. When it enters the battlefield, surveil one. I mean, I'll play this in limited, but I'm not gonna sleeve this bad boy up no. unless they're my limited my draft sleeves. And all right, let's connive and concoct for sorcery for four mana. Gain control of creature with power two or less. Is that just uh, threads of disloyalty? That is threads of disloyalty. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So four mana threads of disloyalty instead of three, which is still fine. It's black or blue. And then for five mana, you have surveil three, then return a creature from the graveyard, from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's actually pretty good. I like this card. This card's good. Seems okay. It's high costed. Um, yes, but like you're like they're all gonna be high costed because you're paying for the versatility, right? Correct. But having access to both effects is pretty strong. Power is not CMC. It's not. It's Thread CMC. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. So thread, you can steal thread. an Aurelia with this. Oh. That's pretty good. Interesting. I think that makes it better, actually. No, not that. I hate the insert button. I actually always forget. Yep, I know. You're wigging out of I always forget that, um, what do you call it? That uh, Threads of Disloyalty, I forget whether it's power or casting cost. It's got to be casting cost because you can take Tarmogoyf with it, which is one of the uh, the key components. Mm. C O N C O C T. Yeah, that seems good. This card seems good. You agree? It's it's okay. okay. It's a one of, at most. I think this could easily be a two of. Like you can steal multiple guys that are very very good. Like you can steal Aurelius. Okay. Format you can dependent. steal. I don't. I mean, like the three mana two two with flying. You can steal that guy. He's not gonna be cast. The three mana two two with flying. The haste dude? The Skylight Legionnaire? No, the, the one that you like, that, that's Gonti, the Gonti. Oh, he's good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think there's a lot of... Like, even the Concoct side seems great. Like, you're surveilling three, you can put, like, something big in your graveyard, like the 5-5 five, five demon, and then you just get a 5-5 five, five demon back. So, I agree with Brobat that says, I like Concoct, but not Connive. I agree. I, I like Which that. Which is funny, because you like Concoct, but not Connive? That's correct. But I also think that... You like the, the, the reanimate side, mm -hmm. not the steel side? Correct. But the Concoct side of it has... We've always had effects like that in Standard. They're just never played. Which is interesting, because you like Lazav. I, no, I don't personally, like, I don't love that card. I just think that it's possible. Was that he that not vouching right. for Lazav pretty hard? Lazav, no, I wasn't for Lazav. No, I just said that I think that that card's standard playable. I said it would, it would show but up. But that's pretty deck. good. That's the that's the, the metric that we're using here. Surveil 3 is pretty nice. There are so many walls you can steal. <laughs> it's a wall format. <laughs> that's true. Anyway, Discovery is uh, Surveil 2, then draw a card... Okay, I think that's it. All right, two mana. That's actually pretty good. It is because you can do it in black. You don't have to have blue. Oh, that is nice. Yes. And it's, it's a sorcery, though, unfortunately. Still two mana is not bad. I agree. Dispersal, five mana. Each opponent returns a non-land... Jesus Christ. Non-land permanent. They control with, with the highest, the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to their owner's hand, then discards a card. So it's basically... It's a five mana Denrova horror that you don't get to choose. Denrova makes them discard? Yes, Denrova yeah. bounces any permanent, and then they discard a card. I thought it just bumped a permanent. I was thinking of the split card. The one that just rotated out. Com not commit to memory. I don't think this card's playable. No, I don't either. No. Okay, see you later. Oh, here we go, boys. Are we really going to spend more than, like, two minutes on this? Cards busted. Cards great. Top two removal spells ever printed, I would say. Top three, maybe. Removal spell, top three. Yeah, I, I would say it's it's in contention with Source of Plowshares, which is extremely narrow. By the way, it only kills creatures and uh, abrupt decay. Okay, hold on. I confuse myself. That happens. So, if we're, are we talking about creature removal spells or just any permanent? Removal spells, right? 
so not creature, right? Correct. Okay, so in general, in general, this is the best one. Not even close. Two mana hits anything. Not even close. This is better than Bolt. Yes, I think this is better than Bolt. Oh god, yeah, so better. Than, what? That's not even close. Yeah, I don't. I think Bolt has uh, Bolt gives you reach, and Bolt kills things. But I think like this card does way way more. This the range on this card is so much larger than Bolt, and it's not as easily replaceable as Lightning Bolt is. I mean, you, Lightning Bolt has so many corollaries like you know Lightning Strike, Searing Spear, Shock, Magma Jet, Mag. I, uh, this is definitely better than Vindicate. It's an instant. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, I mean, it vindicates a sorcery and it costs three. This is a, an instant cost two. I mean, giving them a land versus not giving them a land is not nothing. Don't get us wrong. Yeah. But the argument, that argument of, oh, you're giving them a basic land. That argument's really irrelevant because if you think about it, people argued that for path to exile too. And, and it just and didn't it's literally matter. the premier removal spell it didn't in, matter. in an entire format. I mean, especially like if I was willing to kill your Tarmogoyf and path it and give you a land, I'm willing to kill your Karn and give you a land. Like, if, if swords to plowshares didn't exist people would play path in legacy if i'm also also if i'm just killing your your Ur, your urza's tower and giving you a basic forest you know what sure that's yeah, a trade-off like, i think this is even arguably better than swords like it is that's i agree that's better it than is. swords i agree i'm just so saying what swords. are you saying you're saying it's top three what else is what's above it um i saw the argument made that abrupt decay will be better than this in like cards like like it says like legacy because it's you just because uncounterable and you also there's just not many things uh that you really need to kill that cost more than four mana Oh, yeah. yeah, or three mana rather. Off the top of my head, Jace is really the only thing I can actually. Think right, of. and the land or... in Legacy could be extremely relevant when 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 your mana is already so restricted in Legacy. There's so. not a lot of basics in Legacy. People have been playing way more basics. I mean, you have Miracles decks which are loaded with basics, but what decks have basics? Like I think all decks. I, decks don't. I think there are a lot of decks that have at least one basic in them. No way. Nope. Disagree. No way, man. Let's look. None of the Death Shadow lists have it. None of the Death Shadow lists have it. Reanimate the reanimator list do not have basics. Your correctors that definitely has well, tons that's, of basics, that's obviously. Explore, Grixis yeah. control, uh, one swamp, two island. Grixis control, okay. Uh, goblins, obviously, it's yeah, gonna be like yeah. mono red. Eldrazi post, uh, one waste, one waste. That's maybe, a basic, maybe you're right? Maybe I just haven't been paying lands. Obviously, has some basic, right? I think maybe not. But one forest, yeah. I mean, even if you have like one basic in your deck, being able to get that and like kind of hinder their, their wasteland sure. like death shadow nothing obviously yeah, right don't. but they will now they will now like you just have no you have no incentive to not play one or one swamp or one mountain or one uh, island rather for sure so anyway card is great though no question about it i don't think any of the the downsides outweigh how good this card is so and for what's obvious like think about it, it hits <laughs> it hits <laughs> it hits everything in reanimator decks right it hits everything in Eldrazi all, decks. Well, no, it doesn't hit Inkle Leviathan, so I guess that's your premier target now. <laughs> uh, it hits everything in Eldrazi decks. It deals with Gurmag Angler. Like, there are a lot of cards that uh, Abrupt Decay can't hit. There are a good number of cards that Abrupt Decay does not hit. I think... I agree with you. Yeah, I, It I does hit Tassigur, it hits Gurmag Angler. Yeah, you're right. I think there's a very large number of the formats. I think there's there. a lot of things to consider. Yeah. I, I think the card is extremely powerful, though. Yeah, yeah. I, cards one of the greatest cards we've seen in a very long time which is awesome what about charnel troll four four for three trample <laughs> and like right there i'm like yes i'm in four, you four, shut four, me three up at trample. lunch when i was trying to talk about this this guy yeah i told you there were two cards that i'm far and above are my favorite cards oh wow set. that's this funny because i don't think this card is this is one of them okay at the beginning of your upkeep exile a creature card from your graveyard this makes sense that you would like it because you think it's a surveil format <laughs> If you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Otherwise, sacrifice it. Two mana, discard a creature card, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. This reminds you of Lot Left Troll a lot, which is similar. Like, I mean, you, they're both trolls. Uh, they bo <laughs> Good start. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, but, like, the ability... The troll part is not what it reminds me of. No, it. I know, but... They're two similar that, cards. So that's what I was saying. It. And it, 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 it fits that two similar cards are both trolls. So it means the troll characteristic is present in this card. Which is, you both, you both discard cards for them. They put 1-1 one, one counters on them. Like, that's a troll ability, apparently. Um, and Veril's also had Veril's was the skull striped. Yeah, that, yeah. That gave creatures. Um, he you could flash him back from the graveyard. I'm just gonna say flashback, and you could put counters on guys. Yeah, scavenge. I think. Yeah. So again, another another plus one plus one counter ability from a troll. This is a three three, or excuse me, this is a three mana four four trample. This card is already a buffer. Eight. Like correct, but you might not be able to attack with it on turn four if you don't have a creature in your graveyard. Well, you're obviously not casting at that point in turn four. But then again, your deck. So then, is, why does it matter what? Because the cost your deck is. is built to cast this on turn three. You okay? So here's the thing, I agree with what you're saying. 
I think if your deck is built to cast this on turn three and then attack with it on turn four as a 5-5, five five, awesome. The problem is I can foresee situations where... You can't. You can't. I don't the, I don't know if the format um, allows that, mm-hmm. first off, because just because it's here doesn't mean we can build the deck. It, it might not be there. Yeah. Right? Like Merfolk's um, not a deck. Right. And if you don't have a way to put a creature in your graveyard on turn one or two, you're likely going to spend your upkeep paying two and discarding a creature. Mm-hmm. So you're losing a card. And then they can literally just untap and like destroy it, kill it with something, yeah. right? And then you're two for one in your So, So what I was talking about is two, my two favorite cards was this was one of them. We're about to get to the one of the other ones. So I'm not saying like it's the strongest card in the set or it's one of. I just think that this card is excellent. I think on face value, paying an undercosted mana cost for a large body with a very good effect seems completely worth it it's worth it you know i mean the one the one thing this card does actually have going for it is um damn boy he's thick boy that's a thick ass boy damn if you tapped it instead of sacrifice of course it'd be well oh that would be i would just play it all the time and if i attack with it cool if not oh well um yeah, like like Click Leslie said, you can respond to the trigger by discarding. Sure, you can do that, but it does take two mana on turn four, and they can still kill it in response. So you're two for winning yourself. Like that's definitely an option. Like in a perfect world, I would always be able to be like, yeah, during my upkeep, I'll discard a card. So actually, that's two counters. Kind of, and... You know what's kind of relevant is oh, if you play this on turn three. Right. You know what? Let's say you even play this on turn two. I played on turn two. You have a land of war. I set off. it for you. Right. Okay. Turn two. Turn three. You untap. You have no creatures in your graveyard. Right. You respond to the trigger with the discard. It immediately becomes a six-six trample attacker. Well, not immediately. No, you you put the trigger on the stack, and I have a chance to respond to your four-four okay. and potentially kill it. Right, like I can just assassin's cast trophy this guy or trophy. Sure. Yeah, cast down does it too. It's not legendary. Yep. So I mean, like, there's a lot of fatal push wouldn't have done it, which is nice because you'd have to trigger a revolt, and this guy just might come down sooner. The problem is, like, you do need creature, like. This is the thing. They cast these cards aggressively because they know that, like, you're not going to be able to fulfill the criteria that this card needs before that, right? So, like, this is what, like, if you had a two-mana creature that said sacrifice a creature during your upkeep, or sacrifice two creatures during your upkeep, it's a 10-10 for two mana. It doesn't matter that it's a 10-10 for two mana. Right. Because your odds of getting two creatures into play before turn two are so low. Right. So, like, it's like, it's like almost a built-in, like, stopgap, you know? Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, all that being said, I still think this card's cool. That's why. That's my point. I think it's a really cool card. I like it. I, I'm interested in. Should we it put card. it on the list? I think, I think. I think it's good. I think the rate is solid, and you're not. If you're able to um, facilitate this ability, you're not. It's not card disadvantage. You know what I mean? No. You're not losing anything. If you have no. creatures in the you're graveyard, you can just exile them. Yeah, I, I think this guy makes the cut. So good, Mr. Er, and we talked about it for a lot. That was a good. That was a good chat on that guy. Erstwhile trooper. Look at the synergy between these dudes. Three mana for a two-two. Discard a creature card. It gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. Mm. I'll play this in limited. Sure. This is like a putrid leech. Only instead of playing life, you're gaining. You're, you're discarding cards, so it's card disadvantage, and it's also a leech three mana card instead of this. two mana card. So. Yeah, I don't think those compare. Mm. You can see the difference between uh, between two twos. Two two Golgari creatures between Alara and Ravnica. I wish this card put it in, in into the battlefield or uh, into your hand. Glow Spore Shaman, uh, black green for three one. When it enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. You can put a land card from them on top of your. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. Like I'm just like, do I do I have to? Can like, I just with the way that this set is created, you feel like this should literally put it. In your hand. Well, like, see, here's the thing. This... I see this card, and I'm like, I'll play this on turn two, following then, right into my Charnel Troll. troll. Yeah. And then I then I have three creatures yeah. in a perfect world. In a perfect world. Why did you... What is that? That's a jingle that's been playing on uh, commercials a lot on TV. Oh, oh, it's the, oh I don't watch a lot of TV, so. It's the smoking commercial. I watch a lot of TV shows. I don't watch a lot of TV, though. Yeah. Um, I don't think playable. Probably not. No, no, no. It goes to the top of the library. It, it's good in draft because well, it's okay. So, but like, let's regardless of the fact that you don't get a land into your hand, is a three-one that mills you for three viable? You don't have to put when the it land does on top, enable so it's, your it's po- bro. It's possible, and it's a three. It hits hard. It's a three-one. Right, like so Spike game, Jester was seen in some three. decks. Spike Jester is a three-one for haste. Yeah, you know what? Put that in there Sim- simply because of the troll, the uh, effects like the troll, and plus uh, it's surveil format, man. I don't know what the problem is. Yeah. Yeah, actually, actually, I can see that. That's a good two draw. I sold him. I sold him. I Disrupt tricked him. Eight. 
Golgari Finderberger. I agree this card is great. I don't think it's constructed great, though. Black, black, green, green. When it enters the battlefield, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. I think the mana cost is too restrictive. Yeah, it's either a one or two. If this is a 4-4, four, four, I might be behind it because then it's just a 4-4 four, four Eternal Witness. Right. And it's also permanence, though, so you can't get, like, spells. Like, I can't get my Assassin's Trophy back. Eh. But you can get the Tron land that they destroyed. Golgari gets the Surveil 3, but they just all go to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to keep this as set. Nope, they're all gone. Okay, yeah, I don't think this card does anything. Izoni Thousand Eyed. Uh, six mana. Two, three with Undergrowth. All right, so I'm going to get two, three for six mana. You've already, I'm already, cl I'm already checked out, emotionally Discard. checked out of this thing. When it enters the battlefield, create a one, one black and green insect for each. All right, I'm back. I'm back in. It's worm. It's like worm harvest, except for creatures instead of lands. And it's a surveil format, so that seems good. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice another creature, you gain a life and draw a card. This is not terrible. It, this card shouldn't be, they had a chance with the abilities on this card and the power and toughness to create a card that's actually, that defines a deck, but this is just too over Because it, it also doesn't put the cards in there itself. You're right. Um, so here's the thing. How many creatures, how many creatures do we need in the graveyard for this, to make this worth it? Four. And so we say, okay, there's four creatures in our graveyard. We've spent six mana. We get a two, three, and four one ones. You get four one ones and a removal spell. And then they play them. Chain Whirler, and we get a two, three for six mana. Yeah, this this card's not good, not playable. I don't think it's good enough. I don't even think it's a one of. Chain. This is like the first time or second time we've invoked the Chain Whirler, but I think it's actually very strong against a lot of this format, unfortunately. Like, a lot literally, of this like 28% of the cards that we've talked about. I don't, I don't even think this is good enough for Commander, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a legendary creature, unfortunately. Boop. Yeah, I'll, peace out. Now we're talking. Are we? Yes. Oh, this is exciting you too, Th isn't This it? is my favorite card in the set. Really? This is my favorite card in the set. Does it because it reminds you of, like, Gurmag Angler? Mm, no, it's, it's not even... It doesn't, like it's, it's, cheap. It, the, the effect is actually strictly better than Gurmag Angler. Well, let me read the effect. Go ahead. All right, we got a nine-mana card, seven black-green for a six-six. This spell costs one less for each creature card in your graveyard, which you're you're apparently a fan of putting creature cards in the graveyard. It's a surreal format. It's a surreal format. When Molder Hulk, it's funny because these are all undergrowth abilities, but it's because it's a surveil format. Yeah, that, that you can actually good. utilize them. Yeah. When it enters the battlefield, return target land from your graveyard to the battlefield. Really? What is that? What are you getting out of this? Uh, casting a two, a, the potential for a two mana six six is great. You got seven cards in your graveyard. This card seems great. After this I've card been... sucks. Tell Swole Mike that. <laughs> this card sucks. You're wrong. Have you ever won an FNM? Bro? How many cards? How many times in the game are you going to have this in your hand, and it's going to cost you seven because you only have two creatures in your graveyard? No, not in a deck built for it. It's a surveil format. You will have creatures in your graveyard. I have so, Citrus Supplier. I will have creatures in my graveyard. What? Why are you discard? Okay, so why? Even are you if I pick, casted this for five. Hold, let me finish one day. Don't worry. If, if it plays for five, you're playing a six six for five in standard. That gets a dude back. Yeah, it gets a land back, not you're, a dude. But but I'm giving you the I'm giving you the the, the stop floor and love the it. bomb. Thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. I'm giving you the floor. You're giving me the f no. That's, that's the, the floor. ceiling, bro. No, that's not the ce no. A ceiling is two for six six. What, and I got a land back. Why in your deck are these not the cards going into your graveyard? Why are these all in your hand magically? Well, they can be, but it's a surveil format, so I choose what I draw. How? What turn do you see yourself playing this to have seven creatures in your graveyard? No, that's not my point. Okay, I mean, let's say we have four. We'll out. have four creatures in your graveyard. What, what turn are you playing this on? Turn four, even possibly. With four creatures in your graveyard? Sure, yeah. Well, you need five mana if there's four creatures in your graveyard. This still costs five. Okay, so five. It so if you're playing this on turn five, you think this is the best use of five mana? Or a 6-6 six, six with no ability? I think the flexibility of the mana cost of the card is what makes it good. It can play different roles in your curve. But it's only curve. flexible if you work for it, though. You right. know, a card like Cryptic Command is always flexible because it's, not it's like built I'm, into the card. But it's not like I'm saying I want to build a card around Mulder Hulk. The card is already in the colors that we're already doing what makes it better. You know what I'm saying? I'm, it's not a Mulder Hulk deck. I understand what you're saying. My concern is that um, the deck that you want to build with this, the Undergrowth quote-unquote deck... Currently, it's striking me as a, a cross between a theme deck and like a fun casual deck, not a competitive standard deck. You know what I mean? So like if there is a competitive standard deck behind the undergrowth mechanic, this card should go in it. I agree with you because it has a very um, Tassiger, Grimag Angler feel to it, right? Correct. You're paying a very low rate for a very strong creature. However, if this is just like a fun, if this is like the theme deck of the format where you're just playing these big creatures and you're trying to get them out, but uh, you know, like in that situation, no. You know, like, it just depends on the strength of the deck that you're proposing, which is, like, the build-around undergrowth deck. 
I have to try it. it it's going to be one of the first things that I try to do. Do you want to put on the list? No. It's up to you. No? No. Okay. It's tabletop. I did put... Tr- oh, the truth is coming out. No, somebody anyway, said that. I put Charnel Troll on the list because I, I agree with you there. I think the card is strong. Well, that's... Uh, at, the at trample. The day, that's, a three, that's three mana and trample. And the trample is relevant. Yeah, it attacks for five on the first turn. And even if you do... No, it atta- well, if you, if you, even if you discard a card on the next turn, it attacks for six, which is very Correct. strong. Three, three, six, six for three mana is very good. Uh, three mana for Okran, Okra Assassin. That's Orkin. He like, Okran. He doesn't like uh, fried Okra. Okran no one. Well, I no fried Okra is pretty good. All creatures able to block it do so. It's a one one. Another one one. <laughs> Just pass. I mean, I'm gonna actually go. I'm gonna check and see how many one toughness creatures are in this set because my god, it seems like I've seen seventy, <laughs> and I've only looked at sixty cards. Ionia, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. So this is just, no. This is a skip. Rhizome Lurcher? What are you even saying right now, Wizards? It's a Rhizome. Four mana for a 2-2. I'm checked out. Rhizome Lurcher enters the battlefield with a number of plus muscle counters equals to the number of creatures in your grave. Okay, so that's that's actually pretty good for limited. Yeah. I, I, I don't see this being any less than a 4-4 four, four for 4. And if you have like four creatures in your a 6-6 six, six for 4 is just, this actually seems very strong for a limited c- common. Yeah, this seems great. Swarm Guild Mage, ooh, a go- a Golgar Guild Mage. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh, and gain menace until end of turn. That's a that's that's a stall breaker. That's a really good. Yeah, the giving your use menace is real strong. That was the similar to uh, Lord of the Accursed, if yes. you guys recall from the uh, the go- the the zombie list. Speaking here. of Jerry Thompson. Yep. Speak of the devil. Uh, you gain two life, two mana and tap. Yeah, that's also fine. Mm-hmm. Like, just a, a card that can recur, give you recursive life gain is very strong. As we, uh, I don't know if you guys, there was a card in Legacy that used to be played. It was a uh, Deathrite something, was it? Deathrite. Never heard of it. Deathrite Wizard? I think it was Deathrite Wizard or something. Um, that could just gain you two life at certain points if you needed it. Was like, it a Planeswalker? It might have been. It okay. might have been a Planeswalker. And it was a Shaman. It was one mana though. It was one Death of the strongest Shaman. planeswalkers. Was it Deathrite Shaman? Death Shaman? Yeah, that card was good. That card was really good. Uh, it was. I don't know what happened to it. People just stopped playing it for some reason. It's just not in Legacy anymore. But yeah, that card. Crap. Yeah, like you could tell, just gaining two life incrementally is um is, is pretty strong. I don't know. Constructed though? No, nah, probably not. Undercity Uprising. Four mana. Creatures you control gain death touch until end of turn. Then target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Instant speed. Yes. Why don't they just make fight default to target creature you control versus target creature you don't control? If the if the mechanic just is that, they don't have to put target creature you control, and then it should just say target creature you control fights. I guess you have to say target twice. What, what if they just said then then fight right, and then the fight mechanic is yeah, target creature you control has it, has that. fights target creature you don't control or deals damage equal to the power to target creature you don't control, etc. Right. etc. Et to shortcut it, it's all yeah right. Just say then fight. He didn't call Jerry Thompson the devil. Uh, it was a statement. No, Josh is just joking. Okay. Take it easy. Just making sure. Take it easy. Just making sure. Yeah, Either way, we're never playing four mana sorcery in. Whoop. Underrealm Lich. This is a card I like. Do you? It's a surreal format. Tell me about it. Five mana for a four three. It is a mythic legend zombie elf shaman. Whoa. So it's got all the, it's hitting all the, all the creature type is notes. Is it an illusion? No, because you, you can target it with things, which is nice. Oh, okay. That's fine. Uh, if you, it's not a spirit either though. That would have been good. He looks like a big old mushroom. Hmm. If you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library, then put one of them in your hand and two of the rest into your graveyard. So it's kind of Sylvan Library-esque without the ability to actually pay more life and draw those cards, which speaks for itself, I think. Ability's gas. And then pay four life. It gains indestructible end of turn. You do have to tap it. So it's this is actually very similar to Regenerate, right? Whereas like if they try to kill it and you regenerate it, you do have to tap it as part of the res- resolution of Regenerate. Um since magic is trying to do away with regenerate, you just have indestructible here, but you still have to tap it because they don't want you to like block with it. The end result is the same. Right. So if they're trying to kill it, uh, so you can't block with it, they at least get to kill it and you have to tap it. So it's it stays alive, but they still get their attack in, which is nice. I like this card a lot. Um, I think it's a very resilient threat for a control deck. And the uh, the first ability, if you would draw a card, actually it's interesting to pay four life because that is very reminiscent of Sylvan Library. Hmm? Right. So. You don't get to draw the card, but you get to keep the guy in play. So this card seems really cool, uh, but it's very Twilight Prophet-ish to me. To where it seems good, and the ability is good, and you go, why isn't this card played? I just don't think that this card can be played. Oh, that's super interesting that you also can't mill yourself when this is in play. Because you never draw a card, technically. If you would draw a card, 
So for like blue spells that say draw two cards, you look at the top three, put one in your hand. Look at the top three, put one in your hand again. You never actually draw draw the card. Oh, you're saying like to actually lose the game mill yourself through through drawing? Oh, yes, yes correct. Because it replaces it. Yeah, I think this card's great. I think this card uh, will see play somewhere. Did you agree or disagree? I don't think it can see play. Not at five mana. Like I that card. Commander deck. That seems like a good command. Yeah, that seems like a great. It has card. a legendary feel to it, but it's not legendary. That's interesting. It right? definitely does. the The image alone, if you show me that image, I would think it's legendary. The card image. Yeah, right. It does have a very legend. It has a very everything like, about that. Card. It has a strong presence. The art has a strong. It's got presence. like nine creature types. It's got one hundred and fifty nine like, words yeah, in the text. It's a mythic. Like yeah. it has it's a very. A lich. Uh, it's a lich. Those are generally pretty strong. That's weird that you like the Molder Slug thing, but you don't like this card. That's very weird to me. Because you were okay paying five mana for the Molder Slug for a six six vanilla creature, but this guy costs five, and now you're like off of it. That's weird. Be the way I look at that card is it's very powerful to take a creature that expensive and that that strong the, the the body of stats on it and cast it for two mana. But I'm not. We're not saying that. We were talking about the specific situation where you agreed that five mana was probably a more reasonable cost, and you were okay with that. Right. But the way I look at it is, so if I'm playing a deck that's allowing me to fill the creatures, I, I don't want to play Molder fill Hawk. The, fill the creatures. Fill the graveyard creatures. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm Hashtag not, fill the creatures. I don't think that. <laughs> I don't think that I'm playing Molder Hulk to cast it on turn three or turn four or on turn five. The the way I look at it is. In the game, when I'm on turn six, turn seven, and I can cast this card for two mana, I get a six six body, and I keep up mana for other things. That's relevant to me. Okay. That's the, that's why I think the card is so great. Not because oh my god, I can cast a six six on turn four, which isn't even really, unless you have like the most amazing start. So I don't look at it. I just look at it as you can do multiple things in one turn. I got you. Okay. Vraska Golgari Queen. Golgari Queen. This is my. I like you better at six mana. Four, four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. Why not both? Plus two. You may sacrifice another permanent if you do gain a life and draw a card. Not the best, but I do like the ability. I think it's uh, I think it's workaroundable, right? Like we can we can work with this. Negative three, and it's plus two, so she puts it up to six immediately. If you have like a, a, a sapperling or like a story creature around, you can get rid of. You do get to gain a life and draw a card. Not not bad. Four mana planeswalker drawing you a card. That's okay. It does have a cost though. Negative three, you get to abrupt decay something. Destroy a non-land permanent with a converted mana cost of three or less. So she goes down to one. It's pretty taxing. Negative nine, however, should win you the game. It's on uh, great with Chandra. You get an emblem with whenever a... That's actually a good point. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So literally any creature you control can deal combat damage to any player, and that player would lose the game. It turns everything to a phage. What do you... Uh, is, that, is this, is this commanderable? How how what's the frequency of planeswalkers in commander? Um, Co planeswalkers are played. They're played, but the problem is like everyone just kills them. Right. It seems very easy. And to... you're also they're also not that prevalent because everything's a one of a commander, and you're in a ninety nine card deck. You right. know what I'm saying? So unless you're playing like the weird super friends deck. Right. I think this Vraska is worse than the other Vraska, but I think the other Vraska is great, and I think this will see play. I agree. This will see play because as long as you have a format where you can play a two mana card that draws you a card, and then sack it on turn four to draw again. That's relevant. Plus, you can play this early enough. Like, you can kill their creature on turn two and on turn three in a green-black deck. And then just play this on an empty board on turn four if you if you need to. So, um, For plus, do you have to sacrifice? No, it says you may sacrifice something. And okay. then if you do, you get the the bonus. But even if you don't, you just put her up to six, which is still fine. I, th I think this is great. Okay. Pitiless Gorgon. Three mana for a 2-2 two -two with a death touch. That's a good wall in, in limited. I mean, I'll attack with it, but I see your point. Find for uh, green, green, or black, black. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. That's not bad for, for two mana. Mm -mm. So let's draw two for two, especially in the uh, surreal format. Uh, next, we have six mana for finality. You may put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature you control. Then all other creature, then all creatures get neg four, neg four until end of turn. So as long as you have a 3-3 three, three or greater, you'll have one guy that survives this. Um, so it's basically languish and you put two counters on a guy first. So the rate is on point, right? You're paying two mana for two counters and then you're paying four mana for the languish effect. This reminds me of inner demon from, um, Oh, battle bond from battle bond where it's, it gives plus two plus two to a creature and makes it a demon. And then all the other creature gets neg two, neg two. That card was so, so like you put it on one guy and that guy survives and then all the other guys die. Yeah. That's actually a really good way to look at this card. This, this reminds me of, it's a buffed version. Do you think fine? Do you think the card is playable? Fine finality. I think it, I think it's good in standard. No. Yeah. Really? Nope. Even the first part, really. Nope. Well, split cards can you can pay to 
do both, right? No, no that's only Fuse, no, that's Fuse, which was Dragon's Maze. Oh. Yep. I think this card is definitely playable. I think this is could be a limited bomb. I think you just expressed to me how many creatures you're going to have in your graveyard. I don't want to bring them back. I can bring back okay. Molder Hulks. So Let's, I was them. just going to say, you bringing back two Molder Hulks to play them both for four mana, that doesn't seem great to you? No. I don't think this card... I don't, I don't think... No, Handles Hazard. Well, Hazard Hazard does not have a a real stake in in, who's, in who's, standard moving forward. Unfortunately, Hazard? I don't know. I've never heard of a Hazard. And, and uh, Hazard does rotate. Worth noting. But um, yeah, Neg Four Neg Four kills pretty much everything. And if you can have one creature that survives, like the problem with Wrath of God and Day of Judgment and Damnation, the uh, while these cards are fantastic, the one key problem with these is that you play them, and then your opponent gets the first chance to replay a creature and start reestablishing a board. If you're able to keep one creature alive, I think that's strong. I think Find Finality is is definitely... Doom Blast. No. Yeah, it is. Doom Blast is uh, destroy all creatures but one. But one of your choice. Oh, is it? Yeah, Doom Blast is great. I'm confusing with something else then. It was a... Uh, I thought Doom Blast... Like, choose just... up to one creature, destroy the rest. Uh, I thought Doom Blast was like destroy all artifacts, all enchantments, and all creatures. Plus, it's not even like just saving one of your guys. It's also making it bigger. So if you have a 4-4 four, four, or 5-5, five, five, it's just a 7-7 seven, seven next turn. Mm -hmm. You pass the turn with a 7-7 seven, seven on board, and ideally, most of their creatures are dead. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. It's six mana, though. That's that's a huge investment. Then don't use that. Use the fine and get two creatures back. I don't know. I th like Maybe. Maybe. I haven't built it yet. I, I feel you. I hear you. All right, so next we have status and statue. Uh, status is target creature. It's an instant target creature. Gets plus one, plus one, and gains death touch until end of turn. That's a pretty classic green-black ability. For one mana, not bad. Uh, probably not constructible, but limited is fine. Statue, I think you're always going to play these in limited just for the versatility, obviously. Uh, four mana for an instant. Destroy an artifact, creature, or enchantment. That's actually pretty good. It's not bad. I just feel like the front half of this card doesn't warrant keeping it in. Right, I agree with you're, you. You're in, you have if you're Assassin's never, Trophy effect for the back If half. you're never going to play the front half, then you might as well either have Vraska's Contempt or... And it also doesn't kill Planeswalkers, yeah. which is pretty good. How long before someone says Chain Whirler? For what? Because it's a board wipe. It's a one-sided board wipe with Chain Whirler. When chain oh, Whirler, that's pretty funny. Yeah, you give it... Oh, you, yeah, you and you can just have a green-red or a black-red deck for mm -hmm. this. You don't actually have to... Oh, that's gas. I don't think it's. I don't think on its own it's a constructible card, but I could see it as a combo piece for that. That's for one mana. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You just play Chain Roller with the trigger on the stack. You uh, play Status and give it Death Touch, make it a four four. Ooh. That's good. All right. Let's move on. So for the um, I don't know if we mentioned it. I'll just put it in the uh, I'll put it in the description for the YouTube video so you guys can see the cards that we thought were playable. There were one, two, three. There were seven Boros. One, two, three, seven. Uh, Demir and six Golgari so far. And we didn't include Mulder Hulk, so possibly seven. Yeah, like six and a half, six point five. Beacon Bolt, not so you can use a bacon bolt, which is a totally different thing. Sounds delicious. Three mana deals damage to target creature equals the number of instant sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. That's not bad. It's not an instant. Each one oh that's that is a that is a deal breaker. That's the me. problem. Yep, you. that's it. If it was an instant, yep. seems pretty good. I'm out. And for that reason, I'm out. I'm out. I love that show. That's we good... watch that so... Dude, I can't tell you how many... I do like the Jumpstart because you exile this and then it contributes to that... To itself, right? Correct, because you exile yeah, it. Yeah, that's good. I mean... It's going to be a no for me, dog. It's going to be a no for me, dog. Anything in the cube? Not yet. Um, Actually, I'm sure there is going to be things going in the cube. Wait, does that work? Morgan, actually, we should, we'll, we'll talk about it. Does that work? What? Re read the way Jumpstart is worded. You may cast it from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other cost. Then you exile it. Right, that's still before resolution. Okay. Then yes, it works. It doesn't work? I don't think it does. Because it says... Actually, no, I think you're right. It says, then you exile the card, so you... Damage is checked it... on... on the, the damage is checked on... Upon when resolution. The texture checks, right? Yeah, but the damage isn't dealt while it's on the stack. Yeah, exactly. I think you're right. It, the card is gone. You cast the card. It gets put on the stack. The card is now gone. I'm going to look it up. Beacon Bolt Jumpstart. Did you type Bacon? Uh, I may have. I pulled... I, no, I typed Eakin. Uh, I, I, if someone can look this up, that would be a lot helpful. Yes. A lot. That would be a lot helpful. I'd appreciate it. So a lot helpful, could, thank if you someone, much, Either way, friend. I don't think it... Uh, I, I don't think they would have designed it this way if it didn't work like that. Because Jumpstart is obviously uh, one of the key mechanics in the set. 
It wouldn't count itself when... He, um, It should count itself in a regular cast, right? It would be... It would... No, it wouldn't count itself. It's on It's on the stack. I don't know. This is It's a, on it's, the stack. It's, that's a tricky... That's tricky. Like, you really okay. need to know, like, where the card goes. Call about Kalevin damage. Kalevin? Hmm. Kalevin? Kalevin. Kalevin damage? That's pretty good. That's a good amount. Beacon Bolt is still on the stack while you count your instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard and next cell. It doesn't count itself. Wow. That's weird. Higgins, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Um, anyway, Beam Splitter Mage. All right, so that card's worse, and it actually seems counterintuitive with the way... Like, it seems like you put that ability on a Jumpstart card so that it affects itself with its own ability. That seems intuitive to me. Um, anyway, two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery that targets only him, which is very, very few... If you control one or more other creatures that spell could target, choose one of those. Copy that spell. This, I don't care about this. No. There's a lot of words for nothing. <laughs> yeah, you're saying. I feel like you're saying a lot of things, but you're not really telling me much. Hmm. I like this card. I know you seem to like all these guys. Black, red, red, blue, blue. I, no black. It's not a. It's not a Grixis <laughs> card. That was just a slip. X star four flying crackling, crackling Drake's power is equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards you own and in exile and in your graveyard. So does it count itself when you cast it? Yes. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> when crackling Drake enters the battlefield to draw a card. Ooh, that's, that's where you're selling me yeah. again. I think this card is great. I would play this unlimited nine times out of 10. I just, this is way too restrictive cost and way too much of a requirement for standard. I don't want to work this hard. Agree or disagree? So the reason I like this card is because uh, when I played that blue, that mono blue deck, mm -hmm. being able to, this is like your turn the corner threat. Like you cast this and you can protect it when it comes up, and then you hit him for five. You do have an Ingma Drake already, though. Correct. So maybe but, you but just the play deck eight. was in mono blue. You play now, eight I mean, Drake. Now you're in. You know. Well, you're not going to be playing this in your mono blue deck. No, that's my that's my point. You're, I thought you were saying, well, you had Enigma Drake, so why didn't you play it before? So it's not. Good. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. But I'm saying like Enigma Drake already exists for three mana. You know. Correct. So I don't know. I think it's fine. I think the the costing cost is pretty restrictive. Blue, blue, red, red. Oh, is, it's very restrictive. Is hard. I agree with that. Um, Fire Mines Research. Blue and a red. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, put a charge counter on it. Remove two charge counters. Draw a card. Okay, well, that's a, that's a lot of work. The whole card is too much work. Remove five counters. Deal five damage to any target. No, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say no. That's gonna be a no for me. It, dog. It's just too intensive. There's you have to put too much into the card to, to gain something. Yeah, like I have to cast this and two other spells, and then pay two mana, and right. I'm drawing one card. This may be playable if I didn't have to access it with two mana of each time. If I could just remove the counters. Yep, that's gonna be a big fat. Which sucks because that card design is really cool. I think the card design's cool. It's just way too mana intensive. Love I think that's a, that, that explains a ton of magic cards that I enjoy. True. Electromancer, we've seen it three other times. It's, Love it. It's fine. It's a storm thing. It's a storm thing. You wouldn't understand. Hypothesis, five mana. Draw two cards at instant speed. Then you may discard an on-land card. When you do, Hypothesis deals four damage to target creature. That seems like a really good limited card. Do you see this in Constructed? No. Mm. No way. Five, five mana for four damage and draw two? No. I mean, Prophetic Prism. Would we play Prof... Not Prophetic Prism. Prophetic Bolt. Would we play that? I don't know what that is. That would be better. But so, like, we, we just played... High, I, I understand... Um, Hieroglyphic Illumination and, and Glimmer had, had perks, right? Mm -hmm. There were two cards, though, in, in total for four mana. This is two cards for five mana. And you can discard an excess land to deal four damage to a creature. And it's also a May discard. All right. Oh, you can't discard. It's a it's non-land. That's going to be a no for me, dog. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. So because of the non-land clause, that makes it a little... I, like, if I'm having to discard a spell to kill a creature, I'll we just can, go with my jumpstart card. But at the same time, you can always argue, too, that as someone who played Control, whenever you're casting Glimmer, nine times out of ten on turn four, you're trying to hit your land drops. So if it, even if you could discard a land of that, that kind of makes sense. Right, but in the lake, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't like it. The, the Glimmer is in more, as, as important in the late game as it really is on turn four. This card's great. Ionize, one blue-red, counter any spell. So it's it's an upgrade to Counter Squall, where, which was just non-creature non, just was non -creature non -creature, spell. Yeah. Uh, it heals two damage to that spell's controller. So it's basically an upgraded Counter Squall. You pay one more mana, and it's an Izzet instead of Demir, but you can counter any spell. 
it's if you're in Demi, if it's, if you're in Izzy, you're probably just gonna play this anyway. This will be played uh, in the sideboard of the Blue Red Wizards deck in Modern. Just it's just a it's, it's just, just a two damage. The two damage is relevant. Yep. Oh, and that kind of deck, yeah. League Guild Mage, leagues, uh, two mana for a two-two, four mana to tap it and draw a card. That's great and limited, but oh god, four no, mana. none of these Guild Mages are playable in standard. Uh, and an X and a red copy target instant or sorcery spell you control with converted I house love X that. who may choose new targets for the yeah obviously that's a sweet effect that's cool I mean I'll, I'll play it in limited 100 percent of the time on these colors but not in construct arena Niv Mizzet Perrin another card that could have been great but three blue and three red that's just that's no just I like dumb. this card a lot I do too but that's just dumb like three and three like that's dumb if it was two two and two 100 percent we already have that though. We already have two, two, and two. I think this card's playable. Five, five, five for six. Uh, it can't be countered. It flies. Whenever you, whenever you draw a card, it deals one damage to any target, which is very good, obviously. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, you draw a card. So. Yeah, this is a commander bomb. Bomb. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery, you draw a card. You, you, play, you cast one. I cast one. Whenever they, if they try to Vraska's contempt, if they card, try to kill it, you're always gonna, it's always gonna replace itself. Yeah, Neza Hall style. They were purposeful in making the guild mages unplayable and standard. Interesting. They're, they really have always been unplayable, right? Can I ask why you think the blue, blue, red, red Drake is too restricted to play in a format with check and shock lands? What's check? Oh, um, no, I don't. I don't think it's too restrictive to play. I just think the effect itself for four mana is not. I don't know. It actually might see play. I, I think it's actually not terrible. It's just for four mana. It doesn't seem. It's worst case for four mana. It's a two for one. Maybe. It is. You draw a card, and if they, they kill it, it's two for one. But, doing only doing, well, I'm not going to say... Combo with Curiosity. I'm pretty sure every niv Mizzet is a combo with Curiosity. That's just yeah. that's just niv Mizzet. Is there any skill mention in the first round? Because great. Agree. Four mana for a large flyer that draws a card isn't great. Uh, no, I think... You know what? <sighs> No, I can see why you. Don't no, think I look it's... at the no, I look at the cost, right? And it's so restrictive that I feel like it's it's probably not going to be good, even though I think it might be. It's giving me pause, though. Like it's giving me a lot of pause. I think it's actually just fine. It's just you can only play it in that blue red deck, but I think you're only going to be playing it in that blue red deck. You can't say it replaces the Enigma Drake. Those are two fundamentally different cards. Just because they're both Drakes, and they both fly. It also and, doesn't have and, to, and they both are stars. Uh, there's, it's completely different. The card nets you something when you when it enters the battlefield. That that matters. That's not even close to the same thing as... Yeah, I'm probably going to add it to the list. I think I've come around on it. This card is unreal. Really? This is blue-red blue, this is blue -red Teferi, dude. If there's a blue-red deck, you're playing this as a three of, at least. It does everything that Teferi does. How does it not? Explain it to me. Let's let's go over it first before we get too, too crazy. Five, five mana, five loyalty. <laughs> same as Teferi, right? It's five mana, five loyalty? Uh, yes. Because yes, Tef... Yeah, it is. Yeah, yes. It is. Yeah. Plus one, just like Teferi. Look at the top card of your library. Put top one... Two. Top two. Yeah, this is just... The plus is better. Put one of them in your hand... Plus is ...and better. the other in your graveyard. Okay, so the plus is better than Teferi. Plus is better. Loyalty, casting cost, plus one. So far, one of them is better than Teferi. The other is the same. Okay, cool. Got it. Negative three. Same as Teferi. It deals damage to target creature equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard or in exile. So it's a surreal format, don't forget. So you get to kill a creature, most likely. It's a jumpstart format, someone mm -hmm. said. It's a jumpstart format. Teferi is three mana. Case, how dare you? How dare you? Exactly, so that's my point. This card is not on the same level because it costs three. It protects itself. The we turn know it comes Teferi down. is not three. Come it, on. It can... But... Teferi has the upside of being able to protect itself. With this what? card never does. What are you protecting? What is Teferi protecting itself N with? Negate. If you have to have a negate in hand. What if they, like... It has the ability... Uh, seal away. Alright, I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I'm I not arguing I'm not that Teferi's bad. I'm bad. I'm not saying this card isn't great. I think this, this right here is the fundamental cookie cutter of a great, powerful Planeswalker. No, this is the fundamental cookie cover of a five-mana Planeswalker in Magic now. Like, Jace... It's even uh, better than that. Jace I think it's Detective. Than... Detective Jace was the same. That one, I think, is... Obnixilis was the same. This is better than the Jace. This is on par with Obnixilis. Sure. Which was very good. Yes. Uh, Correct. Rally's advice, uh, negative eight, you get an emblem with whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, this emblem wins deals four damage to any target and you draw it two cards. cards. Yeah, that wins the game. Jeez. All right. Yeah, no, this card is fantastic. It might not be on level with Teferi, um, but it is on, it is right below it's Teferi. It's so close. It's literally the level below it. That's it. It's so close. Yeah, I agree with you. 
this card's great. But I also agree with what you said that if you're playing a blue red spells deck, there's a I don't say three, I would say there's two of them in the deck at the very least. What was that blue red crackling Drake? Crackling, All right, I'm putting yeah. it on the list. I, I I came around on it. Ah, I come around. I don't know if that's a song. Is that a song? No, this card's terrible. Right, was that jump around? No. I come around. Come 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 up come up and get down. <laughs> Come around. <laughs> All right, so three mana, Sonic Assault. Tap target creature. Sonic Assault has two damage to that creature's controller. And no, not doing it for me. So I'm a pass, dog. Oh, a thousand year storm. Six mana and a mythic. Sick. The art is looking great here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That the art is great. great. That should be on a play mat. That's, uh, that's great. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant sorcery spell you've cast before it this turn. So literally, storm in the title is, fan is very fitting. You may choose new targets for the copy. So if I play an opt and then I play like draw two after that, I'll copy it for once because I've cast one other spell before it. Yeah. So I get to draw four off of that. Correct. It's a lot going on, man. This is a very heavy uh, incident sorcery format. <laughs> it's a jumpstart format. This is it's really a jumpstart format, guys. <laughs> uh, that 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 right there could be um, commander playable in a spells deck if you have a spells commander. Yeah, just play this in a Commander Storm deck. We're, we're both off it for Constructed, though, right? No, nah, it's too expensive. Anybody putting this six mana red? We Dragonauts! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's your We Dragonauts, laddie! It's a cool art, too. Was it's that so perfect. What? Was that Irish just? Was that like... What you just did? Yeah. Why are you asking me? I don't know, man. Why don't you tell us? I, I can't tell you. We Dragonauts, yeah, 1-3 three for 3. This is a reprint. Uh, flying, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, because it's a jumpstart format. Uh, we Dragonauts gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. No, I like you, but no. Piston fist cyclops. <laughs> all look. These are all these all these Nivixes. These Nivix cyclopses look like big daddies from uh, piston fist cyclops. That's weird that you would say it like that. These all look like big daddies from Bioshock. Three mana oh, for a four do. three. They do. Another defender. What? As long as you've cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. I mean that's good. Ooh. He doesn't think it's good. It's, it's kind of limited, obviously. This We're not is playing not Commander playable. He's not. He's not. <laughs> are you not entertained? <laughs> All right. For two mana, we have expansion. <laughs> An instant. What? Uh, someone elaborated on what I said and said pissed in fist. <laughs> no. You guys never heard the word piston before? Of course I have. I've heard it. I just think it's a funny <laughs> word. All right. Copy target instant or sorcery <laughs> spell with a converted mana cost four or less. You may choose new. Eh, okay. Okay. And then the next one is interesting to me because it's Sphinx's Revelation only for two more. So good. You deal X damage to any target and then you draw X cards. Well, not... Well, no, it's Sphinx's Revelation for one more, right? But then you're dealing damage instead of gaining Gain life. life. I mean, first off, let me just say that in any format I play, if I can I'm gonna get let the you chance, finish, but... If I, can get the, if I can get the chance to play Sphinx's Revelation, I'm playing it. You already know that. Mike already knows that. So this card... <laughs> this card... <laughs> Man, if you pass the Sphinx Revelation in a blue, in a blue white deck on the wheel, I don't think you're ever playing this card. <laughs> I think this card's excellent. Mm -hmm. I love this card. Do you think both sides are excellent? I love the front half. Yeah. Explosions are reprint of Firemind. No, no, no. Firemind is different though. <laughs> oh, that's not what we wanted to do. Invoke the Firemind. Let's see. Uh, draw X cards or invoke deals X damage target creature player. No, no, no. Invoke the Firemind was you had to choose one or the other. Uh, this is actually both. You're drawing the cards and you're you're dealing the damage. You don't have to choose. This is too much mana. So it's actually kind of a big deal. I mean, the point is, what at what point is it not worth it anymore, right? Like, is it is it six mana? Is it five? Like, five mana, it's just not worth it to deal one and draw one. Six mana, draw two, deal two, is that worth it? I don't think so. I think seven mana is probably the sweet spot where you're actually going to start getting value out of this. You know, we've been talking this whole time about a... Uh, what was that uncounterable spell? That's literally just another win con. Oh yeah, it's definitely going right in the deck. Yeah. Sure, for sure. Not to mention it even copies. It is an instant too. Spell. It's not. You oh, pay eight I mana see. Deal twelve. Oh, it's a surveil format. <laughs> that didn't make any sense in that context, format. but I just wanted to say it. It's a jumpstart. Yeah, format. I think this card's great. I think that has a lot of I applications. Think this, has, this is playable. I think cards that are this close to Sphinx's Revelation that deal damage and also have different modes. Uh, that's all it takes. <laughs> Swole so Mike, I'll play Sphinx's Rev in any format. Take Savannah and Legacy Cube. <laughs> I don't even want to talk to him right now. All right, now the lesser version. Invert. Switch the power and toughness of the two target creatures until end of turn. Card has been errated. Keep in mind. You don't get to keep them forever. 
search your library, and then for six mana, search your library for an instant and or a sorcery card. Reveal them, put them into your hand, and then shuffle your... That's not bad for an instant. No. In, in any instant, any mana. sorcery? You search for both? And or, yeah. So you can get both. You can get an instant and a sorcery for six mana, six mana. And it's instant speed. Like, usually tutors like this are sorcery speed. So you can, or they put them on the top. So you can speed. tutor for a... Um, oh, you know what's extremely relevant? Tell me. The split cards, you can tutor for... If there's any that are sorcery... Are they, have they all been uh, instant, instant? Yes, I don't think uh, they have... Uh, I think if they're instants, they're instants. If they're sorcerers, they're Well, sorcerers. Introvert searches for the Tend to the Face Burn spell and something else. You, you and, mean the, in, and the Copy spell. Do you mean Invent? No. There's no card named Introvert on the screen right now. It's, oh, it's, Invent. It's Invert and Invent. Yeah, Invent. Invent searches for the Copy spell and the Tend to the Face it also does um oh it actually can't copy the um you big fat dummy it can't copy inescapable blaze because it's copy a card of four or less ah uh, nope wrong way yeah copy target uh, instant or sorcery spell with convert mana cost four or less so we, we lied all we had to do was read the card but there we've also read about not 200 start. cards by now it's not so. a jump start someone it's, call me an idiot or did you just say that probably me yeah can we go back and chat i want to see i want to know who it was no don't worry about it it's me do we, do we like this? No. Yeah, I don't think no so. That's a the front too... is useless. All right. So we only have... We have Crackling Drake, Ionize, Niv Mizzet, Perrin, Rel, Is Advisory, and Expansion Explosion for the Is It cards. Uh, expansion Explosion, kind of iffy. I like Explosion a lot more than Expansion. However, it does help you win a Counterspell War as well. Exactly. That's what so, I said. Did you say that? Yeah, I said that. I said that. It's nice. I like that. Yeah. Camaraderie. That's what we have here. We've got a lot of camaraderie going on here. No, we don't. Oh, dang. Six mana. For a sorcery, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures you control. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. The typical overpowered card that just does nothing in constructed formats. If I have two creatures, I gain two life and draw two cards, and then my two guys get plus one. Like, this is such a win more. Like, the more creatures you have, exactly. the better this gets. So you can search for two basics and two gates on the green explosive. Yeah. Oh, wait. What? And two gates? Wait, what is the... Ex wait, hold on. What? What? Hold on a second. Let me check something. I want to check the wording of the card. What's the um, dis uh, s circuitous route? Yes. There's no way. You could... It says or. It says, does it say and or? It says and or. Search over from the two basic land cards and gate card. Oh, it's a... It is worded really weirdly. Like, search for up to two basic land cards and gate cards. It almost makes it sound like you can search for two of each. Obviously, you can't because that would be insane, right? <laughs> But the fact that it says and or is like really interesting because I mean, we got assassin's trophy, so why not make the card busted too? Yeah, right. Like it's all it's it's a green format. Okay, uh, I don't think this is. It's good. a green format. It's it's probably great and limited. You have three or four guys. You're yeah, and limited. This cards. is that's a great fantastic. Card. Limited. Centaur peacemaker, three mana for a three three. When it enters the battlefield, each player gains four life. No, this would be great if like w so. The difference is you have centaur. What's the other one? Courser. No, the or three centaur healer. Centaur healer. <laughs> Which is a three, three for three. Same card, except only you gain three life. They're like, if you give, if you gain them four life, the opponent has to gain it too. That's only fair. True. One extra life point. They both have to gain. They've it. learned. Conclave Cavalier. I haven't seen this card. Green, green, white, white, four, four. This is the green one. Vigilance when it enters the battle. When it dies, create two, two, two green and white elf creature tokens. With this is actually great. That's a pretty good rate for a card. Four, four for four with vigilance is fine, and then you get two bodies when it dies. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in the. I like it. I'm going to put this in the yay, in the yay column. I just, I just don't... Like, I look at that card and I go, that's a good card, but I just don't see how it's played. The casting cost is really prohibitive. It's not even that. Like, four mana... Even in standard now, it feels like if you're casting something on turn four, it's doing something proactive when you cast it. Like What that, is your six... What is your four, four, for three doing proactively? Which four, four, for three? The one you're... Oh, it gets over. larger every turn. That's not proactive, though. Like, sure it is. It, it scales with the game. This one attacks That every doesn't turn. scale. But at a cost, though. This has no cost to it. Well, I mean, ev there are plenty of things I in think Magic. There's a certain, I think you hit a certain creature threshold where you don't actually have to scale with the game, right? Like, a Tarmogoyf, well, not a Tarmogoyf, but a Gurmag Angler doesn't scale with the game, so to speak. It's only 1-1 one, one higher than this. But it's still a premier removal, uh, premier finisher for a lot of decks. But it's not cost two. But my point is the rate, like the 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 six six or the five five or the four four, like they don't always necessarily have to scale. Once at a certain point, you're just big enough to be accepted, right? Yeah. Uh, and the card's good. I just worry about where it'll see play. I worry about where you'll see play. I'm not gonna see play. I, I put it in there. I think it's good. I think you should because the card is good. We're making a list of cards. Correct. It's definitely a playable card. That is a yeah. I think that is a constructed caliber card, whether or not it has a home. Right. 
Twilight Prophet. You just slam this thing every turn you can, and then the two bodies give you... Yeah, I agree with you. Conclave Guildmage, two mana for a 2-2. Creatures you control gain trampled. That's good. Mm -hmm. And for mana? six mana, create a 2-2 white elf knight. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's still great in late game. It You're seems always like play the it. worst of, How, of the guild mages. Really? Making two twos every turn? Mm -hmm. For six mana? Yep. I mean, late game, though, you have nothing to do with your mana. You're just adding bodies to the board with lifelink. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Amara, Soul of the Accord. 2-2 two, two for two. Whenever, it, whenever Amara, Soul of the Accord becomes tapped, create a 1-1 one, one. white soul. This card's great. It's a pretty good card. Especially because of Convoke. Like, you don't actually have to attack with your 2-2 two -two to make 1-1s. One -ones. Are the 1-1s one -ones relevant? Uh, Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't they be? There are a lot of go-wide strategies, and, and this is also... They have lifelink, which is not irrelevant. Chain Warmer. <laughs> that's not, that wasn't my point. I wasn't going there. That That's the obvious <laughs> argument. That's not wrong. But it is an argument. It's still it, worth noting. It is, noting. But, but that's, I, that's not However, you also consider with Chain Roller that you've got these cards for free, right? These are just like... If they play Chain Roller and you play Amara, like, you're not losing any cards. And your Amara survives, too. Right, which is exactly. Relevant. And they're, you know... Well, unless they give plus one, plus one a Death Touch in response. So, like, this card, there is 100% going to be a blue... Uh, blue... Uh, green, white, green white deck. Aggro deck, yeah. With, with uh, the Loxodon. Like also... That, the Loxodon's busted. Feel free to check me out on Patreon, because I'm probably going to post a uh, initial green, white, uh, like, tokens aggro deck for this weekend. I hope it's got four Loxodons. And so we'll see. You guys can check that out. It's probably going to be in the dollar tier. It will be under the dollar tier. So $1 a month, you guys can support me on Patreon. It's, it's worth uh, it. Patreon.com slash Frank Laporte. And the link is in the description. Join Shields. Is that like... Is this like docking? I don't know. This wow. this card is just... It's like docking. <laughs> <laughs> got him. Oh, man. Five mana. Untap all creatures you control. They gain Hexproof and Indestructible L till end of turn. So this is basically just heroic intervention for five mana five. instead of two. <laughs> yes. That's terrible. I mean, it's uncommon, but like... <sighs> heroic intervention, you know that's still like a $10 card, I think? Yes. It's stupid. Because it's two mana. It's a very versatile card for two mana. Well, where is it played? Is it, it's, I don't even think it's played in, com in Commander. Like, Never let the shields touch, man. <laughs> no, you never let the shields touch. <laughs> it's gas. Knight of Autumn. This awesome. card is unreal. So good. This is like Jade Light Ranger's doped up cousin. <laughs> 2-1 for 3. Uh, when enters the battlefield, you can choose one. Put two counters on it. So it's a 4-3, so it is Jade Light Ranger. So Destroy an artifact or enchantment, so then it's Rex Sage. Uh, or you gain 4 life. So wow, this, this is... This card is insane. It does this, a this lot. Insane. Yeah, it does anything you want it to at any point. Like, you have no incentive not to put 4 of these in your deck, because it's always going to be good. Like, to me, this is... Yeah, this card is... At the very least, Wait, three in the main, one on the side. What, are you playing Burn? No, I would play four of these. It's, right. It's always a 4-3 for three. Right, sure. Unless or, you have Living or it Wish. A, or, or it destroys a permanent that you want to. Or you're gaining four life against mono red strategies. Or yeah, Sneaky strategies. Hobo, it's which so I, I felt like it was implied, but Sneaky Hobo says the last card you tap her to convoke, and then the tokens can be used to convoke too. So, like, she's definitely, uh, Amara is definitely contributing to the, uh, the the convoke strategy. Wait, wait, you tap her to convoke, and the to how can the, you can't convoke the same spell. No, not the same spell, dude. But you're just saying later on her yes, tokens. Yes, sure. yes. Like, it, it, they, they facilitate your, your tappage, your convocage. Yeah, this card's me. Like, hey, you playing Burn? All right, I got four Night of Autumn. Oh, you playing Artifacts? All right, I got four Night of Autumn. Like, is this even good in Modern? Because, like... Wait, okay. Yeah, no, this... Immediately... It's great against Burn. It replaces Rex Sages. Against... It replaces Rex But in main decks, even. Yeah. Well, I just don't think there's decks that'll do that. Like, maybe... You don't think there's decks that are 4 no, three for 3 like, with, the, like... The, the, the Collected Company decks would be the only ones that this would go in, and they're, there's... It's... They're so on the decline. Nah, you're crazy. Mm -mm. There's you're no actually home for it. What um, home would it go in? Uh, any Abzan deck. Okay, any which, Collected Company which deck. Which isn't played right now. Maybe it will be now that there's more Golgari cards with Assassin's Trophy and Knight of Autumns, you stupid Billy. <laughs> you stupid Billy. All right, I think this is, yeah, I think we've said enough. This card is pretty great. This this is probably card number two in the set, right? Underneath it Assassin's goes trophy, 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 then this. Yeah, so, oh, oh, the first, the top two cards in the set are Abzan cards. Maybe, maybe Abzan will see Resurgence in Modern, you stupid, you Momo. You Momo. Ledev Champion, Ledev. Yeah, he did play Abzan, and then he didn't make day two, but thanks. Who? Oh, Reed? Reed do, yeah. Wow. Wow. Three mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it attacks, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control. It gets plus one, plus one for each a creature tapped. I feel like we've seen this creature before. Five mana, create a 1-1. One, one. Oh, this card's bonkers and limited. Yeah, oh yeah. Just a 2-2 two, two for three that, like, makes 1-1s one, at a later point, later point in the game. And you can also tap the 1-1s one, to make it bigger. And I'm not going to play this in Constructed, though, because I have this. I don't know if you guys knew, but this is this is my preferred three drop in Constructed. This guy, not so much. However, bonus points, because there's a doggo in the art. So, yeah. Oh, he's riding a doggo. Yeah. Check it out. Well, it's probably a wolf, to be fair. But wolves are doggos. We all know that. 
They're big dogs. They're canines. March of the Muldrifters. And by that I mean multitudes. This card's overblown. X, uh, green, white, white. So it's, it's Sphinx's Revelation mana. March of the Multitudes is uh, green, Sphinx, green, white. Uh, ab- Celestia, Sphinx's Revelation. So- Create X, one, one, uh, soldier tokens with lifelink. So this is just secure the waste, but you get lifelink creatures instead and you can convoke it, which is pretty nice. This card seems great, right? I mean, people will try to make it playable, but I don't think You don't think it's playable? Nope. Because if you're already doing busted things with the convoke me- mechanic, you're ar- it's win more at that point. If I have, if I'm casting this huge because I'm tapping five creatures, I'm probably already winning the game. Do you remember that chain roller card? I do remember that card. Yeah, I'm going to take it off. I yeah. don't like it. It's mythic too, so it's kind of misleading because it seems like my first thought whenever I see a mythic is that R&D was like, wow, this card's really strong. Let's make it mythic. And it's not. Like, that's not how that works. No. But... I think the card is strong. I just don't think it's strong enough. Instant speed still irrelevant. If the card is good, your board state's generally already good. Also, instant speed's not relevant in the the green. Like if it didn't cost three colored mana first, secure the waste is good because on turn yeah. five you can make four one ones at instant speed and it's one color. This makes two one ones at instant speed for five mana, which is just not as good. It works well with vigilance creatures, but if you already have a bunch of vigilance creatures. Do you really need a bunch more 1-1s? One That's this? the point of the card. Yeah, like, I, if you can already pump buff the spell, you're already on winning on the battle. This is a combo with the white enchantment that makes 4-4s, four right? Like, you just play that, yes. and then you make a bunch of angels, yeah. and then you're in good shape. But, I mean, That's by itself, you're just making a bunch of 1-1s one for That's a pretty expensive cost. That's a lot of work. Frames. I don't know what that means. What are you saying either. right now? Pass it. Are you drunk? <laughs> are you drunk, Seismic Wave? That's, a, that's also a great name Rosemane Centaur 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four with Vigilance and Convoke I will probably play this in every limited deck I get it because it's probably 3 or 4 mana but uh, I will never put this in a 60 card deck Mike you awake? Mm. You, want huh? me, you want me to slap you? Huh? Sumala Woodshaper 4 mana for a 2-1 you have already lost me uh, when Sumala Woodshaper enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You can reveal a creature or enchantment from them and put it onto the, into your hand. Onto the, I was going to be all into that. Why doesn't it go in the graveyard? Put the rest on the bottom of your... Because this is not a this is not a surveil... It's a jumpstart format. Well, It's a convoke format. Right. The, like, it doesn't make sense uh, mechanic-wise for, sure, for in the color a Selesnia card to, to put cards in the graveyard. Your stream randomly lags a bit for me, probably when it means my friend. Uh, that's weird because I haven't dropped any frames for a little while. Like it's been, I've dropped six hundred sixty-six frames total, but it's not consistent. I do have. Uh, <clears throat> I've been staring at his frames from back here the whole time, and I haven't seen him drop. <laughs> it's a euphemism, up I think. Also, my yeah, the status has always been green. It's been it's been a green, not a red or a yellow. So, Trostani Discordant, five mana for a one four with uh, another mythic. Other creatures get plus one plus one. That's nice. When it enters the battlefield, create two one one white soldier tokens. All right, so it's three six for five. It's a crappy. Uh, oh, they're actually two twos. So five seven, five six, one two three four five. Yeah, five six for no five eight. God, this is really hard math. A five eight for five mana. At the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. I don't understand the last part of that text. I really don't. Oh, uh, it's just like a homeward path, kind of like a brood, brooding Sorion kind of text. I mean, I know what it does, but it just in in the format, I don't, I don't, I don't. In what it. format? In in standard. Well, they're not making it for standard specifically. Sure. Right. Like, I mean, that's not like it's sure. not necessarily. Um... This is a non-frame dropping format. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is this card good for constructed? Like you, nope. a, you get a two-two, a two-two, and a one-four for five mana. You don't think that's good? And, nope. and it as a, as it has a glorious anthem attached. Caracol was better. What? Regal Caracol. Right, but that doesn't mean just because one card is better doesn't mean the card that's worse is not also playable. The first one wasn't playable. It got replaced with Baneslayer Angel. You mean Lyra? Yeah. Hmm. No, this card's not playable. Hmm. Yeah, I like your Caracol because they're both making 2-2s. Two this is a 1-3 versus a 3-3. Three three. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is good against Hostage Taker. That's true. Oh, that's interesting. If they Hostage Taker and cast one of your cards, you can play this and get it back. For no for no cost. Interesting. That is interesting. I mean, that could be a thing. Huh? Or the blue black threads in, card in nude standard. The four mana threads card. Yeah. Of course, they could just steal this. But even if they steal this, this is actually steal proof because then at the beginning of your end step, each player that it can, says, yeah. it gains it, you yep. gain it back. Yep. I don't know, man. This seems good. This seems like a decent character. I never replacement. said. I never said go wide. Wouldn't I? Literally said the opposite. I literally said there is a green wide, go wide deck. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give it a yes. I never said that there was a non-go wide deck. It That's... also is legendary, which is. 
I'm I'm very conflicted about legendary cards. I think everyone is because you don't want to put too many in your deck because I don't want to draw two or three of these. I just want to draw the one. And if it dies, then I, that's when I want to draw the second one. But until that point, I don't want to clog my hand with a bunch of bunch of momos. However, it is nice to note that you could play this and then if it, you know, you can keep one copy around and just get the two twos, just get the extra two two twos from it. So it is true. it is possible. No one plays Hostage Taker. Well, I mean, that might have been That's true. That's different. That's what I just said. I, I was like, it, it could be a format moving forward where Hostage Taker is extremely relevant. Also, Hostage Taker was, it did see playing a lot of. of the, it was in the Grixis Energy decks. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, it was, a, it was a very heavily played card. And not only that, but like, you're losing a bunch of cards in the format. So, I mean, if anything, it's going to be played more, not less. World Soul Colossus. X, green, white for a 0-0. Zero, zero. Well, I don't want that. It's a zero, 0 That seems pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, it just enters the battlefield with X counters on it. Okay. Cool, dude. Vernal Vernadi shield mate ah two two for two with vigilance skipper cool Vernadi right out of there assure put a one one counter on target creature that creature gains indestructible and infinite that's actually nice it's a two mana counter spell basically mm. it's a vines of the vastwood and it gets a permanent counter which is great six mana for assemble create three two two green and white elf knight tokens with vigilance six power for six mana with lifelink oh with vigilance dang so the knights have vigilance, the soldiers have lifelink, but they're all elves. I don't think it's playable. I don't like it. Yeah, I think it's one of the weaker ones. Mm -hmm. It is an instant, though. The three two twos are instant speed. Yep. It's not nothing. It's a something. It's a something. Flower and Flourish. Uh, search your library one for one. Lay the land. Yeah, search library for a forest or plains card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Is Lay the Land basic land or any land? Lay the Land's basic. I, th I think, actually, Lay of the Land, I think, is a... No, it's any basic. I don't think it's Forest. Forest is actually stronger. Basic land card, yep. Yeah, this is actually stronger than Lay of the Land because you can search for Breeding Pools or Hollowed Fountains oh. or Temple Gardens. Mm. That is significantly stronger. And, and it's not just green, it's also white. Yeah. This is a white card that lets you color fix. Uh, flourish for six mana. Creatures you control gain plus two, plus two until end of turn. That's, see, that's that ruins it It's a me. white card that can color fix. Yeah. That's it. It's not bad. It's not. It's narrow. Mm. That six drop is. Oh, it is. He's right. It's basic. It doesn't color fix. This is basic forest or plains. And it just got so much worse. Like the Dude. other half, the flourish half of this. Dude, that was my face. Did they go right in your face? Yes. He is right in front <laughs> oh of you. That god. is how directions work. Oh my god. Yes! You should... oh. <laughs> so bad. It smelled like your steak, though, from lunch. <laughs> That's probably not too bad, then. All right, let's proceed with the artifacts. I'm sorry. I think Celestia had the fewest. They only had four really playable cards. Yeah, that's um, The rest card. are misleadingly playable. Like, you're like, oh, this kind of looks good, maybe? Uh, Mike Mike burped in, uh, in, <laughs> in, in Rob's face. face. Yeah, in it was not face. ideal. <laughs> Boros Locket. This is a cycle. Um, they're all three mana. They all add the requisite color, Boros mana, Celestia mana, etc. And for four of the, the hybrid mana, you can sack them to draw two cards. I, I don't know. I don't know. Not good enough. I think the Azorius one or the Demir one, I think in a control deck, maybe you can play one of these. Maybe because drawing, t like having a divination just attached to this and in the late game fixes. is great. It color fixes. Yes. Um, I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. Oh, it's a divin. I thought it was draw a card. No, it's draw two cards. Uh, I definitely it's, think in, right. I definitely think in late control game, decks. like late game, you're just sitting on draw twos on the board at, yeah. at sorcery speed. Yeah, that's um, all right. Again, though, you're probably not going to play the Boris one. The control ones, Azorius, Demir, you know, Orzov, what have you, um, probably a little more playable. These are definitely fine in commander, that's for sure. Yeah, draw two on on it on, on, is just fine. On a rock. Chamber Sentry, X mana for a 0-0. Zero, zero. Chamber Sentry enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. So add most of 5-5, five, five, right? X and a tap, remove X 1-1 one, one counters from it. It deals X damage to any target. It's a really crappy walking ballista. And then 5 mana, remove, return it from the graveyard to your hand. This is just a lot of work for all of these things. Yeah, this card's terrible. I pay 5, I pay 5 and I tap it, I pay five to get it back like it's just it, it's a blast of like random words in your face chromatic lantern cool card is this card gonna see playing standard though no. probably not like you just don't need it like you don't need this effect unless you're playing like some kind of five color no. if delirium was a thing i could see it if you're okay. flipping cards if delirium was a thing i could see it 
Yeah, because you just want the artifact in the graveyard. But at that point, I'd just rather play the the, the lockets, right? Like, yeah, we're, yeah. At, we're paying three to, pay, to add one, but these, like, let us draw cards later in the game. True. Same thing. Demir Locket is good. Gatekeeper Gargoyle, six mana. Flying. It's a 3-3. Three, three. It enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each gate you control. No. Limited, this is probably great. You're probably going to have a 6-6 six, six flyer. You think you have three gates? Money. One Frank Buck and two Mike Bucks. Kerwin, thank you so much, buddy. We really appreciate it. Glad you could... Uh, it's it's got to be really... It's got to be, like, 3 a.m. in Tokyo right now. I actually don't know. Kerwitz in the uh, Eastern Hemisphere right now. Glaive of the Guild Pact. What did you say? About gates? By, like, by turn six, you might have three gates. Yeah, if you you're really building around you're gonna it. You're going to have that many? In your... There's one in every pack. I know that, but... So, I don't know. Maybe. Hey. So, maybe it's a two gates. Even if you have one gate, it's a 4-4 four, four flyer for six and limited, which is just fine. It's fine. Glaive of the Guild Pact. Two mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one for each gate you control and has Vigilance and Menace. Uh, this that card's seems good really strong and limited. Like, the Menace is extremely relevant, even if you have one gate. It makes any creature on the battlefield relevant. Potentially relevant. Even if you don't have any gates on the battlefield, you're still giving it Menace. I mean, it's not as good, but, like, two gates is probably the and sweet vigilance. spot for this. It's 9 a.m. tomorrow. Kermit, tell me how the future is. I'm very curious to know. Locket. Yeah, so again, we're not playing this in standard. Like, this is no Umazawa's Jitte, just to be clear. Uh, another Locket, fine. Another is locket. it Locket? Fine. Rampaging Monument. Four mana for another 0-0. Zero, zero. Trample. It enters the battlefield with three 1-1 one, one counters on it, so it's a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. I wish this cost three. Why not just make it a 3-3 three, three for four, and then whenever you cast a multicolored spell, put a counter on it? Like, that's interesting. Wait, it is a 3-3 three, three for four. No, it's a 0-0 zero, zero for four. That enters the battlefield with three one one counters oh, I see on what it. You mean, sure. It's like why not just make it a three three? Like Without if it said whenever ability. you cast a single color, a monocolored spell, remove a counter. Like if there was some way to remove the counters naturally, I would understand it's that you want that kind of tension. Saying, like why have the extra wording? Right, unless you want it to interact with something. But I didn't really see anything that interacts oh. with negative one negative one counters. No, right? but technically you can find it with a militia bugler. Sure. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that was a corner case. That had. That's, that's not no, nothing. Not but you're still probably not playing three, you're, three for four in standard. You're, so. Yeah, you're not playing that card at all. Yeah, and I guess like some modular for modern. I guess you can play it as like an affinity card, but like you're not going to do that. Yeah, it's too expensive. I don't for know. Modern. I guess I can. I, so it just it lets you interact more favorably with cards from the past, older cards. It just because it doesn't fit into modern, it doesn't fit into standard specifically in those ways doesn't mean there's no value to it and i think that's a that's a strong thing to acknowledge yep how can you have an artifact creature cleric isn't that just a robot isn't that just a cleric robot oh, he cares Celestial locket got it silent dart Sweet. one one mana for an artifact sacrifice it deals three damage to target creature oh this is actually fine yeah it's um, uh explosive apparatus kind of it's explosive apparatus except for buffed. four mana instead of two and you deal three instead of two yeah buffed. but it is a it's a great form of removal for for decks that needed and limited if you need uh, just a a five mana lightning interesting bolt. it's uncommon it's not even a common yeah it's i mean it's a lightning bolt on it. it's a colorless lightning bolt so it's pretty good wand of vertebrae one mana put the tap it to put the top card of your library into your graveyard that's actually really powerful in a surveil format very it's not uh two and a tap exile it shuffle up to five target cards from your graveyard into your library why is that the attached effect to this card well because when you mill all of your uh your molder Molder hulks. You want to put them. You want to back shuffle in back deck. in, yeah, All because five you don't them. want to mill them, yeah. All five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, and next we have the guild. I actually didn't have. I didn't write any of the artifacts except for some lockets. <laughs> literal, literal. Some lockets. <laughs> some lockets. Well, specific lockets. Okay. So Boros Guildgate, obviously the five Guildgates, Namir Guildgate, Golgari, is it, and Celestia. These are not going to see playing constructed unless there is a specific Guildgate deck in which you can play all 20 of them if you'd like. Or 40 of them. Yeah, there's 10. No, there's only five. There will be 10 eventually. But right now there's only five. So you can play all 20 of them if you want. And you can play it in your Guildgate deck with explosive vegetation combo. Didn't Constrictor rotate? Yes. Whining Constrictor was in Kaladesh and is gone. Yeah. Rampaging Monument is not a 6-6 six, six for four. Well, it could be in Constrictor and Modern, but, I mean, that's not going to be a standard deck for sure. Is Constrictor a modern deck? Also, Constrictor doesn't double the counters. Yeah, it, it just, just adds four, one. It, it just four, four. So, like, not only is that common incorrect based on Constrictor being legal and standard, it's also incorrect because that is not how Constrictor works. So. Uh, then we have Gateway Plaza. Trans Guild Promenade. Uh, yes, except... Um, it's a gate. It's a gate, right, which is very relevant, obviously, for your gate deck. Yeah, you... Yeah, it seems like a bad idea to fetch that on turn four. You know, you'd, you'd have to put it in the graveyard. 
Yes, you would. Yeah. So it's just it's literally just a rupture spire or a uh, trans guild promenade. Is that promenade? Right? Yep. Uh, which is the little, it's just a, a, a city of brass or a mana confluence that comes into play and you get to tap it for any mana, but you have to pay one when it comes into play. So it doesn't deal you damage like those cards though. Guild Mages Forum. This is a rare land. You can add a colorless or you can pay one and a tap, add one mana of any color. If that mana is spent on a multicolored creature spell, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional one one counter on. So if you, if you have creatures that you're playing off curb for, you didn't like this? No, this card's terrible. Really? Yeah. Huh. I really don't think it's that bad. It's just a land, but like you could play. If I draw my six drop on turn seven, I can just literally just put a one one counter on it for no for no cost. Ruins of Orin Reef wasn't played in a format with. Um... Ruins of Orin Reef also came into play tapped, and it only did it on colorless creatures. This is only multicolor creatures, but you're far more likely to play multicolor creatures in your two color deck than you are colorless creatures in any deck. Okay. I, I think that the, the Ruins of Orin Reef coming into play tapped was pretty bad. But I don't know. I don't think this card is terrible. Like it's it's literally just a land. You play it as a land, and it gives your your multicolor creatures subsequent value. Like I I think this card is just fine. Like you play it as a one or two of, and you just have a land. Big deal. Wait, you have to pay more than that though, because you have to pay one yes. and tap it. So you actually have to pay two yeah. more mana. Right. So That's it costs saying. one you're extra mana. You're playing off curve. So I can play my six drop on turn seven. You're playing on slow curve. But like the point is, you're not always going to be playing on curve anyway, right? So. And it doesn't force you to play off curve. It adds mana by itself too. So, and like we're not saying play four of or play three of even. Like this is just a card you can put as a one of in your in your deck. That's true. I didn't think about that too. He and said it hurts that it adds colorless. Right. That is correct. Deck. That yeah. is a legitimate concern. Um, but this is not going to be your predominant source of mana, right? Like and like if I played, if I drew this for, if I drew Knight of Autumn on turn four, or even if I had a second one, I can play one on turn three with this, and then play one on turn four, and it comes in and it's, it's just a five, five four. four. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's like just fine. For no for no cost really, so then at that point, but it actually don't forget it does color fix. It only doesn't color fix if you're paying the colorless. Mm -hmm. Once you add the one for the counter, it's color fixing for you. Yeah, this actually seems good. I, I think this card is playable. I'm gonna put it down. And then we have Overgrown Tomb, Sacred Foundry, Steam Vents, Temple Garden, and Watery Grave. All great. All of which choice if, and I think you, that's the last if any of you get extra watery graves please send them to me i only need four send them to me first i will make sure they get to rob make sure you message both of us when they're sent just message me <laughs> anyway thank you guys so much for watching really appreciate it. i hope you guys enjoyed this and part one uh i i i enjoyed doing it i thought this was great i think we should do this for future sets too because this is pretty it. fun did you really no i loved it i thought it was hilarious he i think it was it. great i think it was it was also a very good way for us to get familiar with the cards because i wasn't 100 yeah, percent familiar with them know most of these cards, actually. but there now i feel few. like i know a lot of them there are a few that i actually I didn't them. notice but yeah thank you guys so much for watching really appreciate it slam those like and subscribe buttons if you guys are watching on youtube feel free to check the description or if you're watching on twitch in my profile you can find my patreon and my twitch profile links and uh you can support me over there uh, for one dollar a month, you can check me out on Patreon, and it's the lowest tier. And uh, I will likely be writing a Celestia article because there's some sweet Celestia cards. I just put up a Sultai deck on Patreon last night, so you guys can check that out if you're patrons. And uh, yeah, just get some extra content. I really appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.